I don't think people realize that you're a lot closer to being homeless than you are to being <laughs> Jeff Bezos. I'm yeah. talking people in so like, this is I, also, a lot of my no, friends no. are like, yo, bro, people, fucking the poor. I'm like, you're like two and, checks and, away and, from and, being and homeless. What, which podcast were you talking about that you had sat in the same seat as those guys? Uh, Cass and Crank. Cass, Cass and, and Crank. And yeah. where's that at? Uh, in California. <laughs> yeah. Nice. In, uh, I can't remember where it was, but uh, Los Angeles. Oh, California. Uh, dope. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. dope. I'm going to Florida on Tuesday for my daughter's heart birthday nice. uh, when she had her heart surgery. Uh, so I'm going to try to get out there at the coast. I think I have a couple buddies that live in Destin. Um, I know I have one, but they don't fish. So that's where it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we good. Yeah, we're good. Talk a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Right there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit close. Right there. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. We're Gucci Gucci. Yeah, we're Gucci. Okay. Yeah. What's up, guys? This is uh, the Unpacking Yakking podcast. We've got the man himself, the homeless fisherman. What's up, man? How's it going? Pretty Glad good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is episode four, Roland. Uh, four, four. Yeah, yeah. Again, we're still, what I want this podcast to have is just that raw nature of like, we're just two guys that are busy as hell and do this out of pure love, out of pure passion. Um, so we're here. It's a Friday. He came all the way down from Austin. And I know you're not, that's not where you're at, but that's cool. Uh, so, so what happened on Tuesday, man? <laughs> so on Tuesday, I was out on the town lake, my favorite lake ever that never produces any fish for me. But... <laughs> I was out there and I dropped my phone in the water. Of course, it's laying on the bottom underneath the Congress Bridge. If anybody'd mm -hmm. like to go try and find it, ooh, um, so that might be I've worth been, some money. I know. I've been, <laughs> all my all my secret spots are on there. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> oh that's good. But, so I had to drive all the way down here with no GPS, no nothing. I googled the address on my laptop okay. and just drove down here by memory. I memorized it. 35, get on 410, get on 10, exit on Hubner, and it said Oakland and Hubner oh Street. Oh my goodness, this dude here. was doing MapQuest <laughs> shit to get here. No, driving the whole way. No, you didn't print it out? You didn't print them out? No, I didn't print it out. I just I just memorized it. Let's it, go. No music, no nothing, just pure driving. Oh my, <laughs> no music? No, no, I don't have a oh, radio, I don't have a phone, gotcha. nothing. Hey, no Spotify, uh, no nothing. Obviously, if you follow this guy, you know he travels in his van, so it's, you know, I get it now. It's not, not going to have like a Bluetooth. Yeah, so, or it might I, have, have, I have a speaker, but you know, that requires oh the phone. God, so, it's, damn. It's, so I guess if you didn't have, dude, if it was like 1975, no internet, you just had to look at it. You just drove. You just, you just drove. You just the drove radio and, didn't work half the country. You were just there. It's, it's kind of nice to you be honest, mean? going without the phone for a little while. It's like a, I guess what the kids would call it today, like dopamine detox. That's not really what it is, but it is. But it, it gets uh, you. I get yeah, you. You know, you're just, uh, it's you and your thoughts. Yeah. You can get, um, I, I saw a, uh, like a brain scan deal where they had some guy who was on his phone and they scanned the MRI scan or whatever and then they um, showed three days after with no phone and you can completely change your brain pattern in three days in three days your brain will function differently than it does with you constantly checking social Dude, media we're, stuff like let, that. let's talk about that because that actually is something that I try to tell people because it sounds so dumb saying it to somebody who hasn't experienced it or who's constantly on their phone because I run a business in 2023 and social media is every is everything. It's essentially the blood that keeps my business up. Um, when we do our overnight trips. So uh, real quick, I guess this is appropriate to say that you're on the side quest journey of your, uh, in the video game. Yes. You're doing the absolutely. side quest right now. I love little, I love little side quests. <laughs> dope, dope. So what I was saying was when I get back from an overnight trip or those overnight trips where we basically it's, I've become more annoyed because cell reception has increased mm -hmm. that I, I don't have those those trips with Manny and Travis where I don't have cell phone service for two days like I, I, I it sounds so crazy people are like you're dumb like you're just saying that you're just talking shit I'm like mm. you gotta try when, it. when you run a business and your whole daily life if somebody messages me at midnight that they're ready to spend you know a couple thousand dollars on some headlights yeah, and then you're immediately on to I'm, it. I'm on it you're, you're in the blue light the blue light my 45 minutes of resetting yeah, my rods yeah. and cones go back yep. the thing about not having a phone for two or three days and then experiencing life on the water you literally you go back to that animalistic side of the brain i think that's what you're talking about and, and, that's, I, and, and that's what i go for most of the time i uh, i like to you know i 
I, I don't know if I show enough of it to be honest, but I really focus on health and lifestyle and, and cool. you know, just. We, we're, we're about that game. Yeah, we're yeah. about that game. 100%, I, I try and eat as healthy as I can. I like to look into little superfoods and do, I do a lot of yoga, I work out, you know, and I go running and stuff like that. And I just, I get super into that. And no, like trying to unlock the full potential of my body and brain while I'm out there on the water. I know that sounds like, Dude, sounds like it sounds know, silly sometimes. Not but no, it no, it not does at not at all, all because we'll, we'll get into that, that, that that same mindset was what is what we had when me and my boys did the Pecos. Mm -hmm. We, we, you, I, you literally need, dropped, I literally dropped 50 pounds mm -hmm. and we, we were on it. It, it, it feels great. It, yeah, you oh, yeah. feel great. If you're, if you're not pursuing something in your life, it doesn't, you don't, you got to give yourself this purpose. Like I'm a big Man, believer this, in like, hey, this I'm, podcast I'm, fitness to Mac, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big believer, right? Before we even get into the fishing stuff, I'm a big believer that, you know, life has no meaning. Mm -hmm. And you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like this. You can go, life has no meaning. We're just here and I'm just going to mope around and be depressed and it sucks and there's nothing. Or, you know, I like, I like life has no meaning. I can't do anything. Or you can look at it. Life has no meaning. I can do whatever. I can do anything I want. I can make my own purpose yeah. and I create a path in my life to do whatever I want. Nice. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, if you're stuck at like a nine to five or if you're, if you're someplace you don't want to be, you have to want what you want more than anybody else in the whole world right yeah and even if to me right that's catching the biggest bass I could possibly catch nice. you know on a paddleboard and 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 if I if I die and that doesn't happen I don't catch you know whatever fish I wanted to catch I died trying and I'm not well, die happy you know yeah what I, mean? I think I think what you're also there's like a thousand ways to skin there's a you know like a hundred ways to skin a cat mm -hmm. pretty much what you just said. every every I think every generation has their people who have that mindset mm -hmm. and they've got different sayings behind mm -hmm. it like again we're a decade apart in mm -hmm. age and I would say that what I was always told growing up to whenever I was like your age when I was your age I was working at a sales job where I was making a decent amount of money way more than my buddies working at the mall mm -hmm. because I was I was in sales I was doing mm -hmm. I was getting commission so I, there's two there's two sayings that stuck in my brain from uh, my, my boss at the time was he said look sales and, and getting paid off commission is like uh, okay so working a nine to five is like trying to take lug nuts off with your fingers mm -hmm. but you can take uh, lug nuts off with your fingers if you have a crowbar yeah so that commission is the crowbar mm -hmm. that 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 leverage mm -hmm. is the, the commission was leveraged so on and so forth and then so um, I, actually, I did door to door um, I sold solar panels for Blue Raven solar for a yeah. while so I, oh, I've, yeah. I've been in the sales field you've been there bit. Cool. I know I, I get like a little so bit. what you were saying too about you've got to want what you want more than anybody else they would also say the biggest thing was you have to be the pilot in your own life you have and, to and believe I, and i don't <laughs> think people people uh, it's yeah. not easy it's no. a, it's a fucking no. it's a fucking no it's just it's just to having a, to have unwavering faith in something only you can see bro you got to be insane it's, it's just as hard as getting in shape physically as mm -hmm. working out you have to f you have to work out your brain and focus on on positive thoughts and being you know being the person you want to be because mm -hmm. your mind controls everything 100% like, like you know I'm a big believer too that like placebos, I think placebos are a great thing. Mm -hmm. If you believe something truly, oh, yeah, like if yeah. I believe I'm going to drink this water and it's going to, it's going to give me energy for the rest of the day. If I believe it, right. I'm like, oh yes. Cause, cause the, your brain whatever, will wire whatever, away whatever, for it to work. Whatever minerals in the water to, I come up with some bullshit answer, right? Mm -hmm. That is real. Cause your brain will do that. It's mm -hmm. little things like that. Placebos are good. Like you can talk yourself into anything and that goes both ways, good or bad. Oh, you know? for sure. 100%. For sure. Demons are real. You have to, uh, inspirations are real. They're both real. hundred percent. And you have to control that outcome. And mm -hmm. I think you can have a better grab on that whenever you are at your highest version of yourself, yes. which is with the health, the yeah. wealth, the, yeah, the health, ties, the love it and happiness. Back. It all does because mm -hmm. I was actually just joking with Roland the other day. He was like, yeah, he's back on his, his uh, workout shit. He's eating five times a day. I'm like, <laughs> what are you going to get on or are you actually hitting the gym? Like, are you, are you doing what you need to, to, to take that food and turn it into sustenance or what? I'm so glad I know what ponson means. Shout out to James for teaching me. <laughs> Yeah, so, great little, so there you, you know, go. There you go. So, <laughs> so I was like, because I, I remember back when I was on my shit, working out twice a day at five in the morning at F45 and then doing, you know, strength training in the afternoon and taking a nap. I didn't need a single energy drink. Nope. I didn't, nope. I, I was eating food as fuel. I was literally like, I don't care that the food is the same and bland every day because I 
I, I, my life it means more than eating. It's good. Food it's good was fuel. literally just fuel. It's, it's the ethanol free gas. I, I, I like, wasn't. I wasn't know? like. And now you know, with life that happened, now I'm back up more on that. I've, I'm in a comfortable area with weight wise, but my my microbiome in my gut is mm-hmm. back at that. Hey, I need to have some nice food here and there. But the old microbiome was just like, yep. dude, we just need we need carbs. We yep. need you know we need calories. <laughs> we need protein, and we need a couple. Of, I don't care what it tastes like because that was gonna get me to. I'm gonna be a free beast on the water because yeah. I'm a beast in my brain mm-hmm. and my body mm-hmm. I can help myself in, in in an instance of an injury I can help a buddy in an instance of an injury and, and I and I have and I full, can fish to 100% capacity yeah I can I don't I, you know some people I've been fishing with guys that like that give up out after like two hours yeah, and, and I'm like, like that's crazy, dude. Because this is an eight-hour day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> eight and eight is, dude. Eight's a short day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm just, we're just again. My look on fishing post having a kid, post having yeah, to, no, to take the to take the yeah. business to the next level, dude. Yeah, but dude, yeah. back in the day, you know, 2017, 2016, mm-hmm. oh, there was not an issue to fish. Those days that are 12-hour sunlight days, yeah. bro. Those yeah. are the, the days I we mean, fucking lived for. Or catching fish on top in the morning, mm-hmm. having a great lunch in the mm-hmm. middle, and then catching fish on top at night. 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. It was fucking nuts. Like, yep. dude, it was the, those days are the days that made life worth living. 100%. So we, if you haven't listened to the podcast, which is totally cool because we just got started and we only have one episode out, uh, you'll see that we talk a lot about what we've just talked about, how yep. we've never felt more alive in dangerous <laughs> situations. We've never, you know, it just basically what we've gone over. So let's officially start getting into who you are. Cause that's what I want to do is mm-hmm. I want, I think everybody deserves spotlight. I think everybody deserves to be heard. And I think everybody deep down wants that attention. Mm-hmm. And that, and I, and I want that to be shown on this podcast. I want people with 40,000 followers. I want people with 40 followers mm-hmm. because like you said, respect is earned and it's not respect is earned. Disrespect is earned in my opinion, but respect is the norm. You should just always respect. Mm-hmm. But, um, the thing is, uh, I, I, uh, anybody who has the respect of putting in the work, I don't care if you've got 40 followers. Some people aren't about social media, yep. so, but they're fucking sticks on mm-hmm. the water. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I want anybody and everybody because I fish with guys that are dads that can kick somebody's ass who fishes all day for a living and mm-hmm. then vice versa. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk with everybody. So Marshall, when and who and where and how did you get started fishing? Tell me your age. Tell me the person that took you. Let's start from the beginning, the grassroots. How did you start fishing? So from scratch, uh, I've always been a very like outdoorsy kid. I love, I love animals. I'm a big, big. Where'd you grow up? Uh, so I grew up in uh, right outside of Fort Worth in a little town called Azel. Okay, it's one of those towns that you would drive by on a road trip and go, "Oh, wouldn't it be funny if we lived there?" And yeah, like just ooh. herded the cows all day and stuff Damn. like that. They got <laughs> one gas station yeah, and yeah, four homes. And it was three of them like are that. vacant. It's definitely <laughs> grown a little bit now. Anybody who who knows it, but it, but back then it was it was small. Okay, but. So I always, I grew up running around, you know, the lake and my dad. What's the closest lake to there? Cause I, I'm not Eagle, familiar Eagle with Mountain that. Eagle Mountain Lake is my, is my like home lake. That's Technical home lake. Teeth. Nice. Um, and I, you know, I fished there. That was the first lake I ever fished on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always been running around catching animals since I was little. I love snakes. I love reptiles, all kinds of stuff. Alligators. I, yeah. I, I haven't caught a, well, no, I caught one in Louisiana. I caught a little baby one. I haven't That's caught right. a good size. He'd have ran away. He <laughs> hates alligators. I'm, I'm all about it. I, yeah, I, I, I want to get a big that. one one day, but, um, so I love grabbing animals. And I remember going down to the dock cause my dad owned a bar by the lake. Right. Hell so yeah. it was just convenient. Right. It was a little dive bar. I mean, shitty place, but it was great. Cause I got to live right there <laughs> close. Right. Hell yeah. And, um, so I'd go down to the dock and I'd see these people holding up drum. Drum were the first thing I remember seeing. Right? Like a freshwater drum. Yeah, freshwater drum. So nice. I'd see them holding up these big freshwater drum and I was, I would be like, hey, can I touch them? And this was a, yeah, like an eight or nine years old, right? So uh-huh. I was like, can I touch And I would touch them. And I remember wanting to just hold fish. I was like, how many different fish could I catch? Like, I want to try this. And so gotcha. I was like, dad, you got to take me fishing. And my dad has never been a big fisherman. He has, he fishes. He's an outdoorsman. Gotcha. He's more of a hunter though. Dude, crazy. My dad is, it might've been a generational thing. Like mm-hmm. my dad, it's like every other generation. It's like, it's like, like dragging other. a fucking yeah. cat to take a bath yeah. to get my dad to yeah. the water. Yeah. And it's crazy. Cause like, like I'm, I'm this guy that's just so comfortable in water. Like mm-hmm. I'm the opposite yeah. of the, you that's know, how, that's how my dad is. He's right now. He does, a, he runs a produce garden Mm -hmm. which is like his his life goal he's he's 63 now Mm -hmm. and he's just like you know he's got his dog and he's happy he's retired and just just working on the produce and and that's sweet but that's his thing he he thrives on land 
and I just remember being like, "Hey, Dad, let's let's go fishing. Like, you got to take me fishing." I finally <laughs> convinced him. Hell yeah! And we get, we get picked up poles, and, and the only thing he knew how to do was, you know, put the put the rod on the side of the dock and drop it straight down and, and have a little hook for perch, right? Hell like, yeah. or, or that's blue, every bluegill. that's bluegill, everybody's sorry. first yeah. addiction. Yeah. Every little angler's first addiction is yeah. bluegill. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's a core memory. That's, I remember picking those up and just being like, "Oh God, here we go. Here like, we go. This is it. This and I've been over. fishing nonstop. How, how old were you? Would you say you said probably like nine years old? I want to say nine. Nine, dope, nine. right in there, eight or nine years old. Nice, um, nice. Not one hundred percent sure on that, but that cool. sounds right. But about me. that age, yeah. Dope, dope. That's yeah. awesome, man. So, Eagle Mountain Lake, that's your home lake. That's where you got your start. And then let's jump to like, I guess, middle school, high school. Did, did, did you did you take it a little more serious then? Because by the way, he's you're, you're 21. 21. Um, so shoot, man, they got, I got a decade on you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know you're not much older than nine mm-hmm. in my eyes, right? We're all we're about, you know, you yeah. are a far farther as about as far away from nine to 21 as I am from mm-hmm. you to, to me yeah so take us from from the next couple steps so what so you got middle school high school then um through high school i did thsba which is the tournaments the high school tournaments which we're lo- very lucky to have a good tournament dude, system here in that's texas that's one thing i never do i net because again my 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 father was so about mm-hmm. baseball that mm-hmm. i was doing baseball yeah, tournaments yeah, i wasn't no, I got, doing fishing tournaments yeah see that's uh, i mean my parents are all about it as soon as they heard so i got with uh, my buddy Derek petter and he had a boat and so i was his partner um um, and we, I mean, we fished, we fished every tournament. We fished hard. We pre-fished. And Damn, I just remember, so I remember that fucking grinding in high school. Yeah, fishing. I remember, awesome. So I, 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 the first swim bait I ever got was right before I got to freshman year. I got a Huddleston in what, 20, 2015, 2016 now. Um, Damn. So yeah, I was throwing swim baits through there too. And like, I wasn't. I didn't perfect the craft, but I was learning through the tournaments and stuff like that. <clears throat> learning where not to throw them, particularly that was a very important area. But L- learning how to get them unstuck, <laughs> yeah, all stuff <laughs> like that, or or learning how to break them off. You know, everything, everything like, important. But y- yes, sir. Um, so we fished through high school, and um, I got out of high school, and I was kind of like, you know what, the tournament scene is fun, but it's just not. <laughs> It's not where I want to be. Like I want to catch a big fish, you know. Dude, what I mean? that's was, crazy, bro. Was, I feel like our stories are the not 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 the same in that mm-hmm. sense, but the the timelines of before I you know before I was doing uh, just fishing with buddies, I got into the tournament thing, and I had that same yeah. like. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I had a good run with the river scene where I was on top of the river mm-hmm. scene here in Texas and we were beefing with Austin mm-hmm. like a <laughs> motherfucker, dude. We won. I just want them to know. We won. <laughs> Don't get into it. It's some brown boys from San Antonio put it on y'all. But um, uh, after that, man, the tournament scene just wasn't there for me. And yeah. go off on that. Yeah. So what So what? What about the tournament scene did you not like? Mainly, so this is... Um, I'm going to talk shit about Derek here. I love you, Derek, but this is a little bit of a thing. He, he fishes completely opposite for me. And this is why it worked as a really good team. We put, we placed really good a lot because I am definitely like, you know, I want to throw the big bait. I want to try and catch the big fish. He is the opposite. He is the, he's going to get the bite, going to get on the pattern, all that stuff. So we, we had a lot of arguments. We fought all the time on the boat, but it, in the end it worked out because we were both working Dude, towards that, the same goal, but from different angles. This, this right? is getting awkward at this point, bro, <laughs> because, because my buddy, Travis is the same yeah. but we're opposite yeah. so my buddy Travis got a boat like a couple maybe a year now and the the diff the, the fuck it's so fucking yeah. funny I'm the guy that's trying to get us bit mm-hmm. so then when we find a pattern mm-hmm. he's dude he dude he, my love him to death he'll throw a <laughs> fucking frog if it's two degrees or if it's 102 yeah. degrees he's gonna fucking catch a <laughs> giant on a frog yeah. he don't give a shit he'll throw a frog till he's blue in the face he'll die on that hill yeah but he has caught like a yeah. 12 and a half out of ivy Ooh. with a frog Easy. so on in a tournament oh, that's mm-hmm. crazy so y'all had different styles of fishing and then that led to what you just so, kind of not wanting yeah that really led to i mean like like i said that that taught me where i wanted and how I wanted to fish really is it taught me that, Hey, like I don't want to go out and catch a bunch of fish. I want to go out there and focus on a goal and achieve something that is damn near impossible sometimes. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like my, my goal at the moment and, and you know, has been for a long time. I want to catch the absolute biggest bass I can off paddleboard. And I don't know if there's like an official world record, Mm -hmm. but I'd like to set one. I'd like to set one in stone where, where I can have one be like, Hey, the world record is it's this off a paddleboard. Do you have your, do you have your computer or anything to check that out? Yeah. All right. Find that out. Is our yeah, so, rolling so, producer on the so side here? That is find that out. That is a goal. And, and like I said, I, I, you know, 
largest if, bass <laughs> caught on a paddle yeah. board. And if it and if it's the world record, I, I don't care. Like I, I want to beat it, right? Even yeah. if it's even if somebody caught a twenty pounder off a paddle board, I'm gonna beat it, right? And I, and if I don't, if I die trying, then I, I die happy. You the know, th that's, the, the that's most a, important thing is the journey. A hundred percent. That's cool that you already can appreciate that at such a young age. Mm -hmm. That's super dope. At twenty one, I was worried about how fucked up I was gonna get mm -hmm. that weekend, yeah. how quick I could do my homework because my wife had lived mm -hmm. with three UTSA cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. Like it was like how quick could I get to the party at 21? So I, I was never the party guy, right? Gotcha. This is, this is kind of what started me. I, I've actually never had a sip of alcohol. Dope. I've never hit anything. I've never smoked anything. Dope. Never. I just, and it's not a hate for anything. Like I was saying, it just, I just have not got there yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've not got to that you, point in my life. Dude, and everybody's journey's different. And you know, in 10 years from now, you mm -hmm. might be like, dude, I love weed. I don't know what I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. but, and so, you know, you may find that in alcohol and you may never find that. And yeah. that's okay. Everybody's yeah. journey is different. Yeah. And I, I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. I will say though, um, whenever I'm sure you run into it, I've always said that people who drink alcohol are way more into peer pressure than people who smoke weed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I, like I said, I have nothing against any of it. I have, mm -hmm. like it's just this is my own my own journey, and I just I have not reached that stage yet. And you know, um, I don't know. I feel like it. it it gives it get, first off it's all expensive you know uh -huh. it, that is a lot of money that i could put towards fishing <laughs> hey that's a good you know? uh, that's <laughs> that a is driving my, factor that is one of my driving factors of course because as much as i don't love money and and like i don't really care about it uh -huh. it does get me to the places i want to go so of course gotcha. you gotta have a little money it's yeah. just we're corporate capitalism is what yeah. we're stuck yeah. under yeah. in america there's nothing else you can do you know? yeah. it's i mean the system that we have i mean I'm, I'm about as close as you can get to not using money you know just living in <laughs> yeah absolutely then <laughs> we're going to talk about that as part of the yeah. journey so you found out after the tournament scene in high school that's actually cool so like i look at that as like damn i wish i did that and then the way you kind of i think what well, i would have just ran into the sour taste of tournament angling mm -hmm. quicker that mm -hmm. way just like you did mm -hmm. and then so you were like that's not my style i want to chase a dream i want to mm -hmm. be on a paddleboard so then that kind of moved you to that side of things so when did you start when did you start becoming the homeless fisherman. When did you start beginning the following on social media? When did when did all that start to kind of formulate? And you were like, "Yes, this is what I wanted." So do. okay, so this is this is like a three part. We'll go three well, part story here. So, nothing but time so, here, baby. <laughs> so part one is going to be like the paddleboard, the beginning of the paddleboard, right? And okay. I I've been posting on social. So yeah, okay, media, that, and, I, and I have been. I'm sorry to cut you off there, no, but good. yeah, let's go with that. Let's. When did you get off the land? Okay, so. First, I had a kayak, right? Dope. Everybody starts with a kayak, right? And Is I had a, a Pelican catch. I started one. with the canoe. I had a Pelican catch one twenty. I also fished out of a canoe with my dad a little bit. He he was a big he's big into rowing just for the workout. But gotcha. we would go out. But anyway, so a pet, started, uh, started with uh, the, the Pelican catch one twenty. Heck yeah, it's everybody's first dude, one, baby. Dude, highly underrated though. Like that, fi their fishing line is great for eight hundred bucks. Like that is a good kayak. That's a, good, it's a, that, that's a kayak. new cost, you, bro. I remember buying two ka yeah. kayaks from the. Uh, we've already told that story, but the day I went to go buy two kayaks. Dude, I didn't know. I didn't, wasn't trying to break the bank. I've always yeah. been frugal, very yeah. frugal. Yeah. Because I've been self-employed mm -hmm. for ten years, so I had to work for every dollar I make. So mm -hmm. I can't just like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have guaranteed money coming mm -hmm. in. It's all upon me. So, yeah. um, I remember I went to Dick Sporting Goods. They don't even sell kayaks anymore, I don't think. Yeah, and I no. bought like two kayaks for like five hundred bucks. Yeah. I thought I was the shit. Dude. Yeah. I bought a Pest Pelican Angler. Yeah. Had rod holders. The little, the little cheap ones. They have those little cheap ones. But this was like the fishing series. I yeah, remember no, saving I was, up and buying it. Like the, I, was, I was more from the, from the mud. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah. So well, you had like a. So I got that. Okay. And I, I fished the shit out of Eagle Mountain Lake. Dope. I, uh, you know, learned it. I, I learned I learned a lot about that lake. Uh -huh. I, I can still go out there and, you know, put, Kill them, it. put them down sometimes. So every Let's once go. in a while. Whoops my ass. But, um, so I got the kayak. And then I was like, okay, I want a little John boat. I moved on to a John boat. I made a little got a little 12 footer and decked it out. And that was while I was, you know, working, uh, in the hometown. Okay. And, um, and what age was, it, was this? This was, um, I want to say what, 17, 18. Cool. Right there, right, right after graduation, this was fast. Um, and then me and my buddy, uh, Nick, uh, at Juan's fish tacos on Instagram, my best yo, friend yo, yo. at the moment. Cool, cool. Love that dude. Um, we, we have always been into sneaking in you know places to fish of course That's, i think every i, like everybody, I think every everybody, angler everybody has at one point right yeah every so, angler's got that ninja suit they put on yeah, and go out there so and this, suck in. so this is a lake that i'm not going to name because cool. it would be this, would we're, be, this oh, yeah so this we're is all about this is all going to be very private but i will say that this lake cost fifteen hundred dollars to fish for one day right and we were like I gotta go, right? There's supposed to be massive fish in here. We gotta go, but we're not we're not paying that, right? Yeah. So we were looking online and we're like, how could we get on this lake 
Like we were like, oh, like a float tube. And they were like, oh, no. And then we were looking, oh, inflatable paddleboard on Amazon for $200. Okay, sold. It goes in a backpack, right? We can sneak in, jump over the fence. We got the paddle boards, right? <laughs> I got the smallest, little, lightest paddle board I could get. Brought one rod, a tackle box, and we hiked like, I mean, we hiked like three or four miles in, right? To go to this place. <laughs> that makes hop, it all worth it. Hop this, and when I say like game fence, I mean, this is like a like a real game fence, like 20 foot, big, like barbed wire on top. We were like, oh God, we got there. We were like, We've oh, got shit. game fence stories as well. I mean, they try to, so you're tra you had to go, from my point of view is, because we're river guys, that's what mm. we that's what that's what made us kind of who we are mm. instead of going over 20 feet they try to make it the most inconvenient as yeah. possible to go under mm -hmm. this in a river mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like you run up on a game ranch and they're like they know that legally they can't do shit because yeah, the state of texas owns that yeah. property and we will probably get into that in future podcasts yeah. but um instead of jumping up we had to try to get a kayak yeah. under but see the difference here was that you were on legally accessible yeah, you, this you was 100 percent <laughs> private <laughs> right this was this was like get shot if they find out you're there dope oh, so we fuck. we throw the paddle boards over catch them like we're, we, i go over he throws them over we get over, and we're over right and we inflate these little paddle boards and i'm fishing off this paddle board it's two in the morning and end of the story we worked all that we drove two hours out here and we got skunked we got skunked at this amazing lake that you're supposed to go and, and, and you're have like, a banger dude, day you and imagine fucking and i was like paying? dude yeah imagine paying 1500 but the thing that i realized out there is like I was fishing off the paddle board. So you fished it, it multiple times? No, no, just the once. Uh -huh, just the once. Yeah. We're, we're going to go back eventually, maybe. Hell but yeah. I, can't, I can't say when because yeah, don't, want, don't yeah. want what's his name to be on the guard. But <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And like, yeah, man, uh, those those days are long past yeah. me. But anyway, yeah. so so what did you figure out? So we were fishing off the paddle board and I was like, OK, I can straddle this thing like a surfboard. Right. Mm -hmm. And while I was fishing, I could use my legs to move the nose of the board and maneuver. Right. And I was like, holy shit, this is cr this is a game changer i can mm -hmm. i can drop my legs in and i can anchor or i can hold in the wind i can push with my legs and i was like dude in the kayak i just get blown all over the fucking place gotcha, right gotcha. there's no and i was like this is crazy so i started fishing off paddleboard more and eventually i was like fuck the kayak and i ditched it i'm gonna, I have, sold to, I'm gonna it. have to try the paddleboard I, I sold it and i was like dude this is great if if it breaks it's two hundred dollars it's not so a, you're still on a two hundred dollar paddleboard yeah yeah so actually, so at the moment yeah i'm still and on it's a, inflatable on a, yes yes inflatable i like the inflatable one just for you're not worried about like tossing these big baits that we'll get to in a little bit fucking poking it or anything i've i've you know, no, not no. really there. It's, it's like a drop stitch PVC material. So it's a lot tougher than you'd think it would be. Gotcha. But, gotcha. You know, I mean, I mean sometimes you'd really, you're on the river. Yeah. Do you have but, a spare? No, but I have a patch kit and I have like an, you know, okay, okay, stuff. Okay. So, yeah. it's, so it's not like, yeah. cool. I mean, you know, those are all questions just being yeah, an yeah, no, I got you, water yeah. that you're it's just definitely, like, I definitely get it. People are like, Oh, but, but the thing for me is that this is the cheapest way for most people to get on the water. It's either a float tube or an inflatable paddleboard. And it's also, if you have an apartment or something, you can store this thing in a backpack. That's yeah. why in my van, I don't really have room for a kayak. Right. But I can fold this thing up and shoop, put it right. Dude, in there. this and I save so much room. Like that's, that's where uh, that's for me. That is the most efficient way to fish. That's this is I think this pod's gonna this is gonna be dope because <laughs> that because we're trying to the whole like I think everybody should fish off a paddleboard. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it gets it gets you creative, it gets you into places that you never would go before. I think the inflatable part helps with the wind. Mm -hmm. I don't think a real paddleboard yeah, would be would floats, be the same effect. Like if you had a heavy yeah, one, yeah, no, you'd be get blown around I just agree. like it sits you on top of the water and then you can control with your legs. Dope. Now, uh, you know, you got to get one. A lot of people are like, oh, I want it to be super stable. And then you want to go wider. But then once you go wider, you know, you your can, legs <laughs> depends on your, yeah, depends your on you, whether you can do the splits or not. I got gotcha. uh, Depends on how you can straddle it. But um, I, I run right now. I run a 33 inch wide board. OK, um, and that's on, about depending on how sh I would say that's about as wide as the bona fide because I'm, yeah. I'm on team bona fide i love bona fides those are about 34 35 depends on how tall you are but probably run uh, if you're if you're shorter than my i'm 6'2 i'm kind of a tall guy dude, yeah. so I, I i can straddle 33 but for most people i think like 32 31 is probably good for straddling but you got to notice when you go smaller like that and width standing up is harder but 
for me, that's part of it because I love to improve my balance all the time, and I can stand up on this thing and balance, and it and it, gotcha, gives, it gives gotcha. me a nice. I little, think you know. I think if somebody's gonna give a paddleboard a try, they're probably a little more athletically inclined. Yeah, than, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I, don't, I, agree. I think if I, I was agree. like maybe a little back when I was heavier set and maybe not as mm-hmm. coordinated, I don't think I'd even ever think yeah. about. Yeah, no, I'm not standing on that fucking door. Yeah, it's you know de- I mean? it's definitely because I can't balance. Pretty sure you would have sunk it. Oh yeah, yeah, probably probably would have sunk it back then. So, dude, that's awesome, man. Because our biggest thing is why we started this podcast and why we started why we wanted to get the information out to people is because we feel like fishing in general is a very gate kept community mm-hmm. like you said fifteen hundred dollars to fit like who the fu- like what I the know. fuck that's what i'm saying like we're yeah. humans on the planet like like that's insane mm-hmm. to pay that to yeah. fish right um and it's like i feel like the outdoors has been gate kept we're the only species on this entire earth that has to pay to live that's yeah pay someone else for sure dude it's nuts i feel like that is like but that that's the that's the ugliness you can, you behind can yourself into a hole with that though yeah you yeah. will you will because that's the ugliness behind capitalism and monetary mm-hmm. monetizing mm-hmm. uh wildlife yeah and that's why yep. i stopped doing and I, youtube and I, I get some of it some of it's got to happen because we have too many people and some of it's got to be protected mm-hmm. but you know find your own balance find you your know. balance but I, i'll pay i'll pay the money to the texas parks and wildlife to get my fishing license oh yeah that supports the fisheries for sure the share we love tpwd cool, up in cool this with that. cool with that <laughs> yeah, yeah oh we're do we're do we're, again yeah. we're we're trying to promote education mm-hmm. so people don't fish illegally mm-hmm. un, un, unknowingly like yeah. we we want we want to <laughs> knowingly we, fish illegally we, we, yeah exactly <laughs> we want <laughs> you to know if you're doing know it illegal. If you're doing something like wrong. if you're sneaking into a spot at least, no. <laughs> at least own up to it exactly right so it's just that's what our thing is we want to make information available for people who are intimidated mm-hmm. by the by maybe uh, a color of the skin of the of mm-hmm. the of the of the uh, you know sport yeah. or money. Yeah, there should be no. There should be no. This is another thing that I want to go for in, in you know my little journey here on Earth is that I want to. I think we need to abolish the stereotype of fishing. And when you think of fishing, right? When a normal average person thinks of fishing, you immediately have someone come into your head, and it's usually it's probably it's probably this dude with a trucker hat on and he's wearing camo overalls big and, belly yeah you know what i mean and, he, and, and he's drinking a beer and, so you know, so maybe so i think we're gonna get some flack a little bit because we are not that mm-hmm. whenever so, we talked about that mm-hmm. last podcast one of my buddy's brothers was like wow why'd you bring this and that into it and i was like because it's the reality yeah it's the reality yep. i want it yep. to i want the fi- everyone I want fishing should, to everyone, just be synonymous everyone with anybody should, everyone should feel good fishing and it should be a way for everybody to come together what were you trying to say no, it's just like the other thing we're trying to promote man it's just like the the fitness aspect when it comes to fishing you know um we're trying to break that stigma you know mm-hmm. big belly mm-hmm. you know um beer drinking yeah dudes, you know like i'm no I, this is a life this is a lifestyle oh yeah 100 this, this is not just a this is not just a no, i don't think i don't think people realize that i think a lot of my friends and family that know me personally like like real close they get it mm-hmm. but like just friends that i went to school with yeah, their they friends that no i met idea. they're just like what bro yeah. like you're just fishing like mm-hmm. and like mm, isn't it just pro- luck the problem yeah. yeah isn't it just like bro <laughs> the problem with that is it's yeah. like you haven't put in the time on the water mm-hmm. and you haven't really truly developed that to me it's all it's more like dude this is what my ancestors were doing yes all of our cities are around bodies of water for a reason right mm-hmm. so to me i feel more natural than anything yeah thing on the water because I know my dad's dad's dad dad's dad was doing it because in, he had to in, feed the village in life you're either you're either uh like a you know you're a you you help others and provide or you go out and you hunt and you forage and do the you know you got like two of the uh, two sides of it you know mm-hmm. so I think of it my dad is a provider he grows the food and mm-hmm. he stays at home and he takes care of the animals and I am on the other side of this where I go out and I you know I I can provide the food nice. from from outside, and that's. I feel like once you get back to those roots in anything, and it doesn't even have to be this. It could be hunting. It could be yeah, yeah, foraging, whatever, whatever you do. That gives you it. Get, it just something in your brain goes it, yes. Yeah. Like we need it's, that. It's well. We I would say. I would species. say as they say for animals, they start to live on their own at a year old. Mm-hmm. It, I think it's instinct. Mm-hmm. I think it's instinctual. It's, it's instincts and it, right. And it, and I, it, I think it just gets it makes back you happy. to that. Yeah, it does. It makes it, you happy. It makes that we primal should. brain yes. trigger. So. So mm-hmm. like happy, it's a happy place for the primal brain that we all have. We just get lost in society and like, money I mean, and, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're still, and to me, little it's my things personal like even, belief. You take it down into the little things like this, like, like eating, 
having sex, mm-hmm. doing all these basic little human necessities, drinking a delicious little cold glass of water. Uh-huh. Those are great. That makes me happy. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. another, like another, those are all primal when you get down to the basics of it. It's all primal. Shit like the stock market is not going to make you a truly <laughs> no, no, happy no, human no, being. No, no, no. Exactly, dude. The stock market, <laughs> the the value of your home. Yeah, what the, the fuck? What the fuck is equity? Like, no. <laughs> hey, why the fuck is Greg, uh, Greg Abbott's bitch ass taking <laughs> fucking 700 more dollars for my fucking you know mortgage it's like god damn dude so why you know we get caught we get i think i think the thing is man when you work being self-employed you realize that it is a lot of bullshit and it is a lot of why am i why Mm. am i doing Mm. that why yeah i'm so lucky that i not lucky but i'm so glad lucky you had luck's part of it luck's part of life Mm -hmm. but i'm so glad that i learned that from a young age that man i'd rather bet on myself Mm -hmm. than be fucking strapped to somebody making you know that basically like i'm gonna bet on myself always Mm -hmm. whether that whether you think i'm a fool or not i don't i don't need your belief Mm -hmm. because i believe in myself so much that i really don't care what you think so um you get to the paddleboard and then boom. When do you feel like you blew up social media wise? Like what okay. video? So here, what happened? Here, here's the most important part of my story. Okay. Oh, you so, said three parts. So yes, let's get to part two. Number, no, this is number three. Okay. Paddle well, Wars part two. Okay. Paddle Wars part two. Something like that. Gotcha. We'll, so we'll we're just, on three. We're, we're, whatever part we're on. This is a big so, part. So this is, this is, um, you know, this is, this is what changed the course of my life forever. Pretty okay. much. What's up? Um, What's up? In 2021, I was legitimately homeless okay. and people who know me know that I was literally in Florida and I was like living off the streets and I had my little, I had my little bass guitar and I would go busking for money and I would, you know, fucking eat like whatever do I could what get. you had to do. Yeah. Do what I could do. Get right? it and in I how lived, you could fit it in. Lived in my truck and like I had a little single cab Toyota Tundra and that's all I had. I had everything in the back of it and I was just like, fuck dude, this this is like okay but it sucks right but it um, sucks in the society we live in yeah it yeah. sucks in the society we live in right uh-huh. but you know i back I 100 like, years ago I you'd have like, been living large i know, I know right <laughs> okay so this, what's up so, so i was like shit this is um this is something right but i would i would i remember making like a uh, little if anybody's been following me for that long i used to make little voiceover tiktoks right and i would do just a day by day of my life right and it mm-hmm. was it was almost like a mental mental gymnastics like like just a diary right to just hey like I am still alive. I am going to keep going. Tomorrow is a new day. Like this would help me write down my thoughts and then I would post them online. Because that's that was the most important thing to you at that point. It was just, yeah. J- just to get up and do the next yeah, day was the most living. Survive, that's right? dope. That's yeah. so dope. So, that's so dope that you realize that fuck. <laughs> what's going to get me to get to tomorrow because today is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. right, right? I was listening to 50 Cent the other day. Like was just reminiscing mm-hmm. back when I was starting to listen to rap. And he said, dying's got to be easy because living is hard yeah uh, and that's a fucking i was like dude i was like 12 years old singing this mm-hmm. shit with like a fucking my own bedroom mm-hmm. a boom box but yeah. like yeah you know you're living that living, reality living is hard dude it gets super hard, hard sometimes uh-huh super but, hard so i was in florida and i mean florida was all right i i you know like i said i would play my bass guitar on the street and that made me happy mm-hmm. that was like that and fishing were two things that made me happy that made me so get up fishing the next day. saved your life it made me get up the next day right and so um i i'd been posting all the way through this because I, I always like to keep in touch with people and stuff like and that. And so TikTok and so was your TikTok avenue was the of... first time that I ever had people from out of nowhere come out and be like, dude, you're awesome. Like, keep doing this. Gotcha. Like, throw me money. And I was like, holy shit. So you, like, so, t- so you would say TikTok is, and right now in the world, mm-hmm. we've got, you know, <laughs> Congress trying to ban TikTok. Yeah. If you've watched that, it's hilarious. They're like... <laughs> When you're on TikTok, is it connected to my Wi-Fi? Yeah, I know. And the yeah. guy's like, what? <laughs> the Asian guy, the, what? The, the, the CEO is like, uh, uh, if you have Wi-Fi. <laughs> and he's like, uh, does TikTok recognize faces of my kids and Bro. put them in Jeffrey Epstein's <laughs> list of kids? Yeah, and yeah, the guy's like, like uh, am I going to get paid for this? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Are you tracking my kids' likes to sell me products? And, and then mean, the guy's like, you know, like, everything is right <laughs> yeah every, so, everything so there's there's ups and downs to everything yeah but but, yeah, yeah. but, but you know tiktok this is, is the reality tic- of living in a boomerang world <laughs> yeah. growing tic- up in tiktok it. is an addictive substance 100%. i would consider it right social media does, as, as a it, whole it all has its downsides but there are also a lot of great things that i would have never met you guys yeah. if mm-hmm. i did not have social media this is you know uh, I wouldn't is, live the life I live 100%. without social. So I, I wouldn't I'm own very, a company. I'm I very appreciative of it. You just have to know 
you know, how much you can handle and what I, you can't. Dude, you know what, man? I think you're going to be fine. You're going to yeah. be fine because, again, that's the same thing I say. That's the same thing I say, I tell my friends. Sometimes they're like, well, well you're always on online. But it's like, it's different. When I'm online, I'm not consuming. Yeah. But when I'm online, I consume I'm producing. Yeah, that's why I don't get on TikTok. <laughs> there are some on consuming TikTok, moments. I'm a consumer. I'm, I'm barely on TikTok I'll fuck anymore. It, I'll fucking scroll up, and next thing you know, I'm 30 yeah. V- yeah. videos you, deep. And I'm you, like, wait, 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 wait. You wake whoa, up, whoa. but you come back to what consciousness an hour not, later. This is not what I started this for. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I have, my thing is I, Instagram. I love Instagram. Yeah. But so TikTok got you following TikTok. You realized that there was a monetary gain mm-hmm. from, to just help and you this, live your simple just, life. Yeah, this was just a little bit. I was like, well, shit, I can make an extra little buck from this. People are being nice to me for the first time in a while out of getting woken up and kicked out of parking lots, kicked out of under a bridge, I'm sleeping, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah, all yeah. this shit. I'm like just yeah. constantly. But then I'm like, well, this is a great little thing. And so Kyle had sent me a prototype maybe a year prior to this, right? So, or maybe, no, not even. Kyle, let's Who's introduce Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. Kyle is from Throwback Swim Baits. Gotcha. Right? And Kyle sent me a prototype um, in probably, I want to say March, February or March of 2021. And this was later in, this was like later in July mm-hmm. of 2021. And I was like, well, shit, you know what? I have a little bit of money now. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to see Kyle, right? Because Kyle, where, where's he at? Because he's in Minnesota. Minnesota. So I made the long trek up to Minnesota. That's fucking I, crazy that a swim like, bait maker in Minnesota when that, that place is like I frozen know, half know, the year. I know. There's <laughs> amazing fishing up there. Nice. But we'll get to that. So I go up there and I meet Kyle and his family is just, I mean, lovely, right? And they and they kind of took me in a little bit for a month there. Uh-huh. And and I just hung out with Kyle in the shop and I would, I would help make baits as much as I could. Sorry, Kyle, I'm kind of shit at pouring, but <laughs> but I could definitely put some fucking hooks and split rings on some baits. I know that. But anyway, I, I stayed up there and I fished up there and Kyle opened my eyes to, hey, you could make money at this. You could live like this, mm-hmm. but not, you know, not so broke. And like, and I was like, well, shit, that's, you know, that would be nice if I, if I could, so if Kyle, I could turn this into so something. Kyle at he, ba- open, he opened my eyes to the world of all this and the possibilities, you know? So I really, I owe, I owe everything to him. Nice. I owe everything to him. That's why I call him, that's why I call him my dad. He's not my real dad, of course, but. How old is he? But he is uh, 29. 29. 20, 20, 20, so he's like our age. Sorry, sorry. Maybe gotcha. 27. I'm okay, sorry, cool. I love you. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Kyle is the one who came out with this design. You're up there helping him out. Yes. And that, and yeah. how long, so when was this? So when were you in Florida? Florida. This was all twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. So we're yeah. we're in we're in the end of March of twenty twenty three. So I would say that you've amassed two, two years. a following. And two, we were just talking about this yeah. the other day off offhand. People use the pandemic for two things: to either change their life mm-hmm. or make excuses. By blaming the yep. government, yep. the president, mm-hmm. the whoever, mm-hmm. that shit did not. Me. That shit didn't make a difference to yeah. me. <laughs> I had no fucking. I, 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 tr- I tried to. I tried to tell my friends again. This is where I have this weird perspective from my friends who work nine to five or who are her do like what, what most people would consider a normal mm-hmm. life. To me, I'm like when when pandemic hit day one. Dude, I was like, welcome to my life mm. the last 10 years. Yep. Every day yep. I have yep. to get up yep. and make the money that keeps yep. the roof over yep. my head, yep. feeds my family. I only had my wife at the time, my dog, mm. and had built this life that I live. Like the 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 pandemic didn't change anything for me because yep. it was like all y'all are now, now it does a very, very, very shitty situation for a fixed income because your life was basically stopped. Your, yeah. your, your, yeah. the little blood that they give you to keep mm-hmm. the carrot that mm-hmm. they held in front of you was immediately taken away. Yeah. That's, so that, that's shitty. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't talk on that. That's yeah. um, unbelievably mm-hmm. shitty, but everybody was then introduced to my lifestyle for the last eight years, nine yeah. years. Yeah. So that's what I, I'm glad you saw. I'm, I'm glad that we've have somebody in the building that basically used the pandemic to then mm-hmm. turn into something crazy. Cause we talk the about pandemic that with, was originally shitty for me but Mm -hmm. that's one thing I've always been pretty big on about um, in life and even to this day if I am dealt bad cards you have to play them right and you can turn it into a good situation dude I couldn't there is no such thing as a bad hand you know what I mean it's only another opportunity it's only another learning experience we I had uh, again this is why oh you're good (laughs) yeah dude we we got we got nah you're good bro this is gonna be great (laughs) bait blooper oh it goes like in (laughs) and then it probably just loosened up Trying to, we're, we're scooting good. away. No, you're Trying good. Trying to lean back a little bit. Just. All right, guys, this is this is real. This is raw. This is <laughs> this is our episode four. <laughs> so fishermen just come to the studio, start f- fucking it up, dude. No, I'm just kidding, dude. It happens. Um, cool. so uh, right, we're back. shit. What were we talking about? 
we were talking about you changed your life with the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the Delta bad hand. Um, we talked about this as well with the producer Roland over there that um, right after I got my home, my wife had a miscarriage and then we had our baby girl. We got pregnant again and we had our baby girl finally March 22nd of 2022, mm -hmm. four days after birth, she went into cardiac arrest Ooh. and had to be airlifted to Austin, open heart surgery, day Ooh. nine of life, the whole nine. Wow. So it's like you said, yeah. there is no bad hands. It's how you react. So again, my, my daughter, you'd never be able to tell that she's had mm -hmm. open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. She's the craziest crackhead little That's one year awesome. old I've ever I, seen. And I, and I bet that just, that oh, dude, is, it's, it's the, it, it, it makes getting up so much more dope as fuck but yeah. uh it's it's like and i was we were joking again we this is again we we're very comedically he, different he, I he told it to me so calmly i started laughing because i thought he was joking around and mm -hmm. then he was like no it's like no <laughs> she my, flatlined she flatlined oh, my daughter yeah. and my wife lived in austin for three months and uh, i had to try to keep a business afloat uh, working four days a week going yeah. to see them friday saturday sunday coming back from austin like i i love austin but i hate austin but i love austin Austin, but it's same, like same. love hate right as a texan you've always hated austin and then you <laughs> love it but then yeah whatever so i had to be in austin for three months every weekend mm -hmm. because i wanted to see my family i wanted to see the progress i wanted to make sure my daughter was yeah. gonna live you know what wow. i mean so it's like and we had a joke that you know, he's like, man, fuck, but you got an affordable house. Should I love to have a kid with something wrong with him if I could get an affordable house? It's a joke, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's, it's again, it's like, uh, man, like you said, dude, the hands are just dealt. It's how you take them. Yeah. Because again, yeah, I got a house before the craziness of buying a house. But then my daughter died. And then she had everything, everything turned around. And so it's like. On top of that, just like being able to like be so optimistic on on like the cards that he was dealt with to, to a point where he even for his like wife he was just like he was just a positive energy that like mm -hmm. everybody needed yes during that time because he was just so calm and going through all this and that's the thing that like bewildered me i was like he was like yeah i'm being serious i was like what like, no nah, dude i've cried i've cried i've yeah, cried I know, I i've know, cried for hours but in the heat of the moment i think it's just a, that, that instinctual you need to, you need the, to embrace the, that though the that the instinctual, yeah. your, your your lows i've let the trauma hit me so i can move past your, your it. lows give you the highest of highs the highest you know what i mean yeah oh yeah, yeah. the like struggle you need that, the, that's the, the um, fight that's something um this is on the same topic i, I swear but yeah, yeah, you, no, know no, the, you, you know the, it, you know the ice bath trend yeah, yeah. right bro so like where people so annoying I mean, everybody's the trend. fucking getting an ice bath right <laughs> well i was like okay I, you know i i want to know because i'm fucking all about that shit whatever it's going to do for me but basically what it does is it gives you a dopamine rush after you get out of it for 30 minutes, whatever, mm. right? So you, st you stay in there, you stay in there for 30 minutes, an hour, however long you want to do it. And then it gives you um, the dopamine rush, which is motivation for the rest of the day. Um, basically your body's response to dealing with the bullshit of being in the ice bath is I'm fucking freezing. You're, you, then you get out and you're like, your body's like, oh fuck yes, we're out dude. Let's fucking <laughs> so, go. So, but that's, but, that's but, what but is, that, happens in life though that, with everything. everything. That is a simple everything. example yeah. of all the shitty things that happen to for you. sure you for get sure. that and then but once you're out of it you're fucking going you're going you're and going. i've always tried to tell my wife that, that momentum too, because my wife as as well would always you know um express how shitty she felt her life was mm -hmm. before you know it's all fine now and i was just like you know it it's annoying hearing it from somebody who didn't have to suffer but at least like at the end of the day you're you deserve so much more because you've been through that and your body is like you said you the, all the trauma and all that the dopamine from the highs mm -hmm. is so much more rewarding post that mm -hmm. so again there's still days where it's just like i can't believe that ever happened i can't believe we're here but also man i've again just uh, luckily i still got both parents they did a good job of just mm -hmm. kind of like telling me i could do anything i ever wanted to do mm -hmm. so it's always been like at that first two or three months after everything happened I had to be that rock I had to be that just like it's going to be okay even mm -hmm. though when it like you know it seemed like it wasn't you know mm -hmm. um, and it was just like you know it, it is what it's going to get us to tomorrow mm -hmm. and then once tomorrow starts looking a little brighter and a little brighter and a little brighter and I remember when we fi finally got to go that's why I stopped fishing for so long because I like I was like what the fuck that man you know <laughs> like it doesn't matter but when we first went out after my daughter was home yeah. after eight weeks in the hospital or it was four weeks i always double it it's four weeks and the whole recovery she's amazing i don't even understand miracle baby legitimately crazy um and after we went fishing the first time back i was like man this is th that primal 
fire. Then this all started. Then this, do we need to do a podcast? I need to get back with Outdoor <laughs> yeah. Alphas. I need to, I basically Run almost losing everything basically reignited yes. stop worrying about what other people think stop worrying about not having this stop you've been to the kind of tying it into the ice bath dude before the pandemic i was going to the gym every day i was mm -hmm. taking cold ass showers after my mm -hmm. first workout mm -hmm. i was basically a freaking sharpened samurai <laughs> sword at 6 a.m <laughs> when now it's like i'm still you know i'm back to the not being there but it's like dude i i've done so much this is nothing mm -hmm. i can do more i can always do more mm -hmm. you can always affect tomorrow it's just so no excuses Simple exactly that. it's just not it, any excuses yeah it's just like dude most, I, the, most of the people who are out there making excuses haven't done a damn thing <laughs> or been through <laughs> something <laughs> crazy yeah. You know Sorry, what I mean? Like so <laughs> that's yeah. cool. So that's cool, man. So TikTok kind of changed your outlook. Um, now you're able to monetize fishing. You're able to kind of live your own lifestyle. I guess tell me your day to day now. So now you, uh, if again, if you know who he is, you know about this. But this is for people who don't know. Who? What do you do now? You wake up. What's going on? All right. So here's the day by day. Right. I wake up and. Do now you got bagels. Now you got bagels yeah, hooked got up bagels. by Rolando. Come on. <laughs> Can you help me? So I wake up and uh, if I'm near a water source, I do like to take a, a nice cold swim in the morning, especially like around the springtime. Mm -hmm. um, over there staying at Barton Springs. It's nice. You can go Damn, hop so in you the water, just right? Get up, hop in the water. Get up, hop in the water for a minute. Get that, you know, get the blood running. And then I like to make a good breakfast. I think the breakfast is my most important meal of the day for dope, sure. Dope. Dude, we're uh, very similar. Lots it's of freaky. Lot, lots of eggs, spinach, uh, you know, uh, mushrooms, salsa, chia seeds. I love chia seeds. Those are mm. a little secret. That's I'm a little run, secret. I'm gonna run to go get That's some acai secret. bowls real quick. But a lot, a lot kidding. of this stuff is also out of my dad's garden, which is sweet. I always make runs up there to get shit. Cause oh, because he's in Fort Worth. He'll give me produce like spinach and stuff like that, and that's. I mean that's oh, like it's primo. as organic your and dad as, grew it as straight out of the ground as it gets. That'll that'll my that'll me and my father strong. are more of the providers mm -hmm. on the hunting him and me mm -hmm. with the water. Mm -hmm. We don't have any any of the <laughs> growing produce. So cool, cool. Yeah, so I, I make a I make a good breakfast. That's the most important thing. And this is all about at about ten o'clock. I don't wake up super early. I'm not a I'm not an early riser, but and then I uh, go figure out where I'm gonna fish for the day. You know, I put in a good hard day's work. Um, usually I'll make lunch on the water. Um, have a bunch of fruit, vegetables. I get to, and that's all content in today's yeah, this society. Is all, this, this is all that's all content too, in you know today's I mean? yeah. world. That's yeah. getting up, mm -hmm. jumping in the thing. Which, which I would like to say that, like, I do a lot of this stuff for a video. But even right now, I have no phone. I'm not really recording a lot. I have the GoPro running, but this is all stuff I still do. You know, this isn't like this isn't like oh, I'm gonna do this for the camera. Yeah, that's no, what I. Like, that's what I think. We like, we run into yeah, that where yeah. our friends are like, y'all are just doing it for clout. You're just doing it yeah, for the likes, and it's like, this is stuff I do whether or not. Literally. Yeah, uh, I was. I've gone yeah. on days where I forget the camera. It's annoying because I know I'm gonna probably catch a yeah. fucking giant. But, but shit happens. You it still usually go. happens. But yeah. I'm still gonna go. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I've been doing this since I was two or three. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go fishing anyways. Yep. So why not record it? Yeah. Right. Why not showcase that yeah. that you can for do me, this? For me, recording is very fun, and, I, and for me, making videos is has always been kind of a passion. Like since I since I was little, I always made like like. No, I mean, when I was real young, I used to make skits. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I got an app, an app where I could edit and cut videos. Like I was like, holy shit, I can put these together, <laughs> right? And so I would I would go record skits with my buddies. Like on what on Vine? Uh, no, it was it was more it was I had this app called Video Shop, which I actually still use today for little edits and stuff like that. Nice. But I would literally make like little movies where we'd come up with a plot line and like I mean this was literally like us playing dress up. Bro, but that's this is so funny, man. So so early, right? And and now um I really get to like flex this creative muscle that I have and you're I get your to, own director. Yeah, Dude, which that, is fun because more recently that like I don't know if you watched the recent YouTube videos, but that's yeah, where I, I saw that you that's had where one I, of the skits there. That's why I try and take the direction because I love that shit. Dude. I love coming up with a storyline. I love making like characters for people and, and just like that's that's fun for me. I've I've since lost the whole craze on YouTube just because mm -hmm. why I want to do the podcast and all that mm -hmm. so I have not unfortunately forgive me. But that's freaking so funny man because when we were when I was a kid we would uh you know jackass was really big yeah. again i know yeah. we're 10 years apart but jackass was huge when mm. we were like in elementary mm. school and this is a total totally like cancelable name but we used to record on like a stupid camera we would call it kill yourself oh. and we would literally like record me and my buddy we'd make like a mound of dirt and like fucking jump on like yeah. a little stupid bike and we'd make little skits that's like and that. that's hilarious and that, and that is hilarious and it's like that's why i said it was fucking hilarious hearing you say that because me and my best friend at the time his name is nick he dude he literally we'd come over and like dude we'd 
jump fucking jumps that we know we couldn't make, <laughs> bro. Like rack yourself on a bike. Like I want to say, I want to say that the 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 last YouTube video, if anybody saw it, um, the literally the first shot is me like hurling myself out of the van. That was real. And I was like legitimately bleeding and like I had a rock stuck in my knee and I didn't uh, know it for like a couple hours. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I pulled this like big ass rock. Nick golly. was there. And I was like, well, that was in my knee. This is all like real, you know? That's, that's funny, dude. That's, that's cool. That's but that's what, what makes it genuine. Makes story. Yeah, that's what sure. makes people watch yeah. the organicness mm -hmm. of that is what, and I think that's what we've had some mm -hmm. feedback on the pod and they said, I like the Chawler, still you. You're not putting on a show. You're not pretending yep. to be. That's why when we talked to you before, I, make, I was I like, if you've, you've got a sponsor that you're worried about losing if we talk some silly stuff mm -hmm. let me know I, and i that's the one thing i love all my sponsors and companies i work with because they let me do whatever i want to do you know what i mean it's not and they're you know they're all great guys and and but it, but i can make videos for me first you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I feel like that's what that's people, that's you, what you have faith in, in your product that you're like, let people, me be me. I'll sell your shit. Exactly. That, and I think, sell, and let I, think, me be me. I think in the end, that's what people want to see. They don't want to see the same old fake, you know, they don't want to see the like, like Nissan commercial of your famous, yeah, goody, goody, your favorite goody, goody basketball, you guys, you exactly. Know nobody, your favorite like, basketball like, player. Like, like I love you guys, but like, you know, we got to do, you got to do something different to be, to yeah. stand out. You know what I mean? That's just how it goes. And the best thing you can do is just be you because everyone's different. I was you know? watching a podcast with Theo Vaughn. I love watching his podcast. Uh, Who's it called? Uh, the weekend, the weekend uh, this before past this past weekend. And he had like on a freaking famous TikToker. I know you've seen his videos. It's like a, it's a, it's a guy, a black guy in Atlanta. And he has kind of like, Oh God, I wish I remembered his name, but he would make like crazy videos. He'll go up to people and ask them crazy. Like, like fucking the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> And he was explaining yeah. how he got his first corporate yeah. check for 10 grand to run a product for like a, a waist trainer for yeah. women. And he was like, why would you take that money? How am I going to market this? And his big deal, deal was he would like go up to people who didn't work at Walmart and yeah. ask where to get the product. And, oh, my okay, yeah. right? and like yeah. and he had like a lady who was like a little old lady that didn't didn't look like she said a bad word ever. And she <laughs> said, I don't know where the fuck it is. I don't work there. <laughs> and he was like, this is it. This is the one. And he sent it to the lady and she was like, no. Nah, I don't want I don't want that. So she he was Tough. like, you know what? I'm gonna post it anyways. The video got like five million that, yeah. views. So that, and that's she, he gave her the money back, posted it anyways. She then contacted the guy back. This was the the the, yeah. the, the guest on Theo's podcast, and she and he was like, That lady called me back and sent me the 10 grand back so fast because she said I sold a hundred thousand dollars worth wow. in a weekend because of that video. So it's basically that's honest. I'm glad that that's honest. Right so there. so Jesus. basically or you covering their ass. Yeah. So that yeah that's that's you basically saying and, I trust myself with the content. Mm -hmm. Let me make my content. Yep. The baits will move, and yep. I like that companies like Hill Country Swim Bases let me do that. Mm -hmm. And companies in the past have given me stuff and never and like set parameters. Same with Outdoor Alphas here. Shout out to Outdoor Alphas for letting us shoot this. Is that they were like, do your thing. We trust that mm -hmm. your shit's going to be okay mm -hmm. because everything y'all have done in the past has yep. been on your own, kind of your own. It's not like we have to follow. Like, we're respectful in all manners, but they didn't give us like a set list of rules mm -hmm. that like, you can't do yeah. that. You can't have that. You yeah. can't have that. If you make money from that, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. we're just doing it. We're just doing it out of pure love. And also I want to say that a lot of the companies that I work with are completely like, these are companies that I've been supporting since day one that I've been fishing and legitimately using. Like so all, it's the, easy all the stuff that I use is not something that just, Oh, they offered me this. No, though, this is all legitimate. Like, and a lot of this, you'll see even the stuff that I'm not sponsored by. Like, I still use a lot of stuff. Then I will, I will rep that until I die, just because I legitimately you know use works. it. Yeah, yeah. Every, I'm not, every I'm not, angler builds yeah, confidence in their own baits. You know, hundred percent. So that's that's super dope, man. Even, you're just. What you're saying? Yeah, even like down to the clothes I wear. Like I've been wearing lateral vision stuff since before because I I fuck with their style. Yeah, like yeah. That yeah. is that is a good. They push fishing towards that more open um, side. You know what I'm saying? Where like, where like, you it's mean, more inviting. You mean, you mean break the status quo of yes. Bill Dance and your grandpa. Yeah, and that's what, that's what we want to do. That, that's what we want to do, man. And again, it's just, it's easy to be like, oh, look at those guys bringing that up or bringing it at this in the color. But it's like, I'm not, I'm not saying it in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's a reality mm -hmm. and I'd like reality to slowly change yep. in the sense where like I could go to a random dock in the middle of nowhere, Texas, mm -hmm. and instead of seeing, you know, 10, 65 year old guys, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that, you know, beer belly to the moon. Yeah. But like, I'd like to see like a guy like you hold mm -hmm. up, you know, just chilling. Mm -hmm. Like, what's up, man? Mm -hmm. You fishing today? Yeah. And, then, fi and then families and kids and families and, whoever, and kids and, young, and, and it's just like, people who don't have families, people who, didn't get have, together. people who didn't have like a 
grandpa or a mm-hmm. figure who got mm-hmm. them on the water. They watch your shit, mm-hmm. and they're like, you know what? Exactly. I'm gonna go because I saw Marshall do that. I go, I go for myself, and that's yeah. what I want everybody else to go to for or go for as well. Go for yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't go for anybody else. Exactly. Go because you love it. You Don't. know what I mean? Go because you want to have fun and you want to meet people and, and have a good time. Oh, that's yeah. all it's about. So I feel like we got a good basis of who Marshall is. <laughs> um, and that's awesome, man. The, the story's dope. I like that it was... I don't think people realize that you're a lot closer to being homeless than you are to being Jeff Bezos. I'm yeah. talking people in so life. This is I, also, a lot of my no, friends no. are like, yo, so bro, people, fucking the pores. I'm like, you're like two and, checks and, away and, from and being homeless. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that think I make a fuck ton of money. I'll, I'll be <laughs> this is honest to God numbers here. I make about fifteen hundred dollars a month. OK, that's it. That's what I live on. And that's that's what all I drive you need. On. I drive a van that gets fucking 14 miles a gallon. Mm-hmm. And I drive that bitch all you over the place. You do have to be willing to make sacrifices. So, yeah. You do have to yeah. be willing. I, to I, live a certain life. You also, you're I 21. Defi- I definitely don't save any money. You gotcha. know what I mean? That is real numbers. And you're I, living you day know, to day because yeah, you don't have 100%. any like serious liabilities yet. Mm-hmm. You don't have a wife. You don't have a kid. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you, no. you don't have mm-hmm. a significant mm-hmm. other. You don't have this, that, or the other. So you don't have to mm-hmm. like, you don't have an X amount of money you need to yeah. make yet. Yeah. So that's I just, perfect. I just live. I think know? we I, talked about that last yeah. podcast. So like um, initially, like I think that you're, so willing to give everything up you know that when the success does come to you and it will come to you just like i we believe in you man like Mm -hmm. you have such a unique story that i think you're gonna be prepared for all that because of these hard uh yeah these hard times that you've been the the money when it comes the money (laughs) when it comes when you're making like i don't know let's say you're making 10x which is Mm -hmm. probably crazy to think about but fifteen thousand dollars a month when you really get down into Mm -hmm. like you get into the fucking social Mm -hmm. media you get into the how to how to like you're moving widgets right Mm -hmm. my prop my company it's all custom but you're moving widgets if you can put a widget number to how do i get 10 grand in a month yeah. i gotta sell 400 and that's and that's really you, you can get that you'll get there you'll, yeah, and, you're gonna be fine and of course like you know this is pure transparency of course i'm trying to make money like you know what i mean anybody anybody who anybody who everybody who's like well, I, my my the running joke in my friend group is oh albert's the socialist because i'm i'm like the most like <laughs> yeah. like i'm the least red pill friend yeah. in the mm-hmm. friend group mm-hmm. and it's like but I can't change the whole fucking system we yeah. live in. Yeah. I'm just trying to do it on my own yeah. terms. Yeah. And I try to tell that, to, I try to tell my friends that the way to change your outlook on it is you can't really change capitalism and what it's coming to, but you can try to earn more of the means of production. That's yep. the best thing I yep. can do. And what I mean by all. that and is I tell guys is the the quicker you get paid for the value, mm-hmm. whether that's moving to a smaller company, mm-hmm. whether that's doing your own thing, when you start making money based on the value you bring to the product, that's that's not, you know, yeah. that, that's not, that's what everybody wants. Mm-hmm. I mean, essentially, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that's cool, man. You're going to be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> You're just getting started. You're 21. No crazy liabilities. You've got yeah. a good thing going you're gonna be fine i think you i think your patreon page man is really fucking good like really uh, yeah man uh, i saw i saw you guys thank you so much yeah dude uh <laughs> of course man anything to support the cause and whatnot like i'm always all about supporting creators mm-hmm. and whatnot and like i i just uh i think that you're gonna get a huge following what i right now patreon's new i feel mm-hmm. it's new to a lot of people but mm-hmm. once that traction does get going yeah, yeah. patreon is looked yeah. at like only fans <laughs> yeah. by like yeah, our dads dude, our dads I, are like I, I, boy I you on that patreon Dude, I you have, showing them dick pics. <laughs> I have, dude, I have, I had it's some like, dude the other day comment, and he was he was all upset. He's like, "Real G's wouldn't wouldn't make people pay for their content." And I'm like, "Well, I'm sorry that the fucking 800 thousand Instagram posts and all the YouTube videos that I have are just not <laughs> enough for you." Like, and I, I you know, I don't I, like Woo, like the, to be uh, to be honest, the Patreon is you can't be afraid to just lay it like yeah. seriously. Some people though, need I, to learn. To be honest, and to be honest, the Patreon is a side project. I don't put full 100 percent effort into it. But there is exclusive stuff on there. And I feel like, you know, $10, you get access to all the videos I've already made. It's just like, it's just a little thing. Hey, if you guys want to support and get a little extra here, that's all. That's all. It's just a little avenue, you know, and I, I, it's a thank you for me because I'm not just going to, I'm not going to take money from people. Like what, even, even whenever I was really like homeless, dude, people, you know, just wanted to send me money. And that was, that was always rough for me because I don't want to just take, I want to give too. So I would do this thing where I would write there. That's so real, dude. The way you said the way you said when I was actually homeless because <laughs> so that I, was a reality at one point when, and wh- so now you're like you're comfortable you're so comfortable being uncomfortable I would say being homeless yeah. is the 
most uncomfortable yeah, thing ever. Yeah. You're just so comfortable being uncomfortable that this, the life you live now making whatever you said, mm -hmm. 1500 a month, you're just like, bro, when I was actually this homeless. This is great. This yeah, is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I love you, all you guys who listen yeah. and watch and every, we'll pull, we'll I mean, plug Jesus. all the Patreon, everything yeah. and yeah. everything, but, everything. But like, dude, I would, I would do this thing where people would, I, I'd set up a Venmo, right? Cause people were just begging when I was, when I was in the, in the dump, right? People were begging like, dude, let me send you money. And so I'll be like, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll set up a thing. And I had this Yeti cooler in the back of my truck that I've had forever, right? I still have it. And um, I would get the donation through Venmo and I would write your name on the cooler and you'd be in the video. That was my little, that was all I could do to put you in the video, but I'm gonna do something. If you're supporting me, I have to give you something back in return, whether how small it is, it's, you know, I don't like think I can't, that I can't guy, just take donations. Like, yeah, I, I don't think that, that guy realized that he doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, pay, I, it's right? not and a necessity. Also, and it's also, just, it's, it's your you're giving back. To you're be honest, and to be thinking. honest, right? A, a lot. I do a lot of tutorials on there because I don't do a lot of tutorials on the thing. But if you send me a DM and ask me a specific question, I'll just answer it. Yeah, especially. It's not like, yeah, it's yeah. Not like I'm not gonna answer and be like, oh, you have to go to the Patreon. Yeah. I'll just tell you what you want to know. I, I think but it's we, just there for if you want. If I think you want. we. I think yeah. we established yeah. that in the first podcast in the sense of that we said we're going to we're going to to gatekeep these certain spots and so on because if you find them on your mm -hmm. own you're going to enjoy it that much more mm -hmm. that primal mm -hmm. right yeah. mm -hmm. so it's not like we i understand I, you don't have to explain that to me right but you know for anybody who needs to hear that mm -hmm. that that's all that is it's, yep. it's he wants you to enjoy it a little more if you figure it out on your own and even mm -hmm. if that means paying ten dollars a month again you you're paying that, you're paying full price for Jordans, you're paying full price for <laughs> yeah, the yeah, clothes you wear, yeah. you're paying full price, you're getting poked in the eyes for eggs, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, again, if you pay $10 a month, you learn how to tie a certain knot, throw a certain lure, yeah. you could cut out it's a, buying and it, meat, you and know? A lot of, and I, here's another, another completely honest thing, is that my Patreon stuff is not like, this is how it is, this is what it is. No, it's more of a thought provoker, if anything, right? Mm -hmm. right? Cause I don't, yeah. I don't ever say like, hey, you need to fish this, you have to fish it this way. No, I go, hey, this is how I fish. And it's this is where I fish it. Go try it and apply it and get creative with your own situation. It's your virtu it virtual journal, basically. Yeah, and that's- Exactly. That's one thing, like when I was looking at it, um, I was, essentially what I got from it was just like, it, you made me wanna, Create experiment. Yeah, you want you made me want to creative. Yeah, you made me want to like write a, like a badass you know blog post. You, yeah, you made me want to go out take photos. You made me want to you know go out and take a video. And, and most importantly, you made me want to go out and, and fish by watching your looking at your Patreon page. Good. You know? I'm, I'm glad that it had that effect because that's what I'm going for. You know, nope. <laughs> that's awesome. There you go, ten dollars awesome. a month. <laughs> hey, well, so I was gonna say, and then I want to kind of move quicker to some of the other topics because how long do you think you want to go? Dude, let's just keep keep rolling. going. Okay, yeah. so we're now seven um, minutes. One, one other thing that I would, you know, this is just a personal thing to look into. So, and I, I'm totally going to butcher this. I need to write this shit down that moves my, <laughs> me as a human um, forward in my life. So it's like every human needs something that's like worked for. So, and again, I'm totally going to butcher this. Uh, they need, so it's kind of like piggybacking on health, wealth, love, and happiness. It's mm -hmm. kind of like that. Yeah. Build your own wealth and whatever that means to you. Health whatever that means to you, love, whatever that means to you. But the other one is to be a completely circular person, mm -hmm. you have to have that creative side. Yeah. And that- Talk closer, talk oh, closer to the mic. And that, there you go. and that <laughs> is, um, and that's where you were talking about earlier, it was a while back, 30 minutes now, but you were talking mm -hmm. about how like creatively it makes you go, it mm -hmm. makes you flow. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. I like that I can get, my business side of things running great. My personal life side of things running great. But the creativity that I do on my Instagram is purely me. Mm -hmm. It's purely mm -hmm. my inspiration. It's purely smokable. You can get on, <laughs> find a good song and you make can, a dope edit. I that, know that's that, my, that, that's my creative process. And everybody's like, ah, oh, that sounds so stupid. Like, I don't give a sh I don't care, dude. No, th if this, that sounds this, stupid to you. This sounds stupid too, right? You can, this is, I, I think about this when I'm just zoning out. You can imagine anything in your brain mm -hmm. now i know that sounds fucking wild right people are like <laughs> huh like what the fuck are you talking about you can literally picture anything and it's there right that is crazy to me and the then, unicorn right, humping and then, roland yeah, i'm thinking it's about in it your right head now. it's in your head right now right <laughs> it's uh, that's cre incredible and then what's even more incredible you can make it happen as a, as bring a, in the unicorn as, <laughs> as a person with you know you have your thoughts you have your hands you have tools you can make things from your thoughts, uh, put them on paper or onto you know social media stuff like that. You can create things, and then other people can share and just 
Like, oh, what I, the f- I, that's I, fucking I, nuts. I me. love it from <laughs> a business perspective because. Let's see, you think I can make this? <laughs> yeah. Let's go for it. check it out. <laughs> Fuck. Almost made it. Almost. He back. No, I made it. it. I made it. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying, brother? No, so uh, the whole unicorn, unicorn humping my leg thing, that's not a far touch from reality dude because there's one 10th planet motherfucker from my mma gym that's yeah. gonna be wearing rainbow spats and rainbow <laughs> rash car that's gonna be fucking le- uh, humping my fucking leg that's hilarious we, lo- we love to rip him for we were like if we're ever if we ever get in a fight like out in the streets with our boys he's gonna be on the fucking floor scooting next to him because <laughs> he does mma I, <laughs> but it, i do think uh, this is a suggestion aside from fishing stuff uh i know you're into like health you literally have like the same ideology that a bunch of MMA and jujitsu fighters have. Mm-hmm. And uh, you do the yoga already. He's if you ever to get, get the, everybody to go. If you ever get the chance, just check out 10th Planet. You're in Austin. There's a great gym called 10th Planet. Austin. Because he wants to touch your butt. No, just, <laughs> just check it out sometime. Try jujitsu. I think you'll like it. And okay. you know, they got showers and stuff there. That's so sick. Like, yeah, right. try it out sometime. All right, I'll have to think about that. My yeah. buddy, my buddy uh, Nick, is, is it, he loves fighting. That's we all it, have that one thing. buddy that's he, like, he dude, lo- I mean, bro, he loves fighting. Jesus Jeez. didn't tap. This dude, just kidding. I mean, this dude, this dude will try and pick a fight with any, and he's, oh, dude, that's on Manny, bro. Manny, he's small. Bro, Manny, he will, bro, I, mean. I will literally fight anybody for Manny. Manny is my whole I love that But shit, Manny though. will fucking, Manny will call Manny me and be like, into some trouble. Manny will be like, dude, you ever just fucking fight a coworker on lunch? And I'm like, no. What the, who the fuck does that? Manny. Fuck Manny it. Does that. it. That's another primal thing. That is no, no, fighting. no, 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 no. I, t- I tell some my, my wife, Samantha, that all the time. They're like, she's like, why does, why do you think Manny gets into fights like that? And I'm like, it's dude, that's fun. primal. That's primal. It I was like, because Manny is of your brain. Like, if we were you know? all fucking rolling around as a group of friends back in the Stone Age, dude, Manny be the dude come in there head butter dude to death. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, he would. Yeah. And we'd be behind him, like fucking, you know, helping him kill him. But <laughs> we all dude, our our tribe is yeah. so, so dope. So we're having steak night tonight in my house. It, dude, we're so like we're we're so close. Mm-hmm. And I love that. It's kind of helped. We talked yeah. about it, how it iron sharpened iron. We forged yeah. each other to be better versions of ourselves. We went on a weight loss journey, mm-hmm. kayak fishing, why I'm beholden to it is saved my life. I mm-hmm. lost 50 pounds. Comp- I couldn't even tie my shoe without holding my breath. I was so fat. Yeah. So I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, fuck this. I need to make a lifestyle change. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we'll get off of that. Let's move on to something else. So you and I, I would say then, damn, if you've been tossing swim bait since 2015, so have I. That, maybe even a little bit before. So like mm-hmm. I, we always like to think that, man, back in the day, we probably brought uh, swim baiting, the culture, everything about it has changed. So it, I don't like the hypeness of it. I'm into shoes. Mm-hmm. I hate the hype shit with shoes. I hate the hype shit with swim baits. Yeah. I try to get bait. I always offer, you know, a service for some people that can, you know, throw baits my way. But also, I fucking hate that people are buying baits and then selling them for a hundred over retail. I hate that. Yeah, I mean, I it, cannot stand it. Pay the guy what it's worth because yeah. it's custom built. I'm in the custom business with automotive. I get it. Pay the guy what it's worth. This is a beautiful hand painted, mm-hmm. handcrafted, hand poured mm-hmm. the whole nine. It's worth the money, trust yeah. me. But um, I don't like the hype shit behind it. I don't like the that people are selling this lure for two hundred dollars yeah, I mean, over retail. And I'm th- like, it's God. its own little, it's its own little ecosystem and off. market. That's so I want to talk yeah. about swim baiting for a little bit. We've got some swim baits here, guys. We're gonna do. We're gonna talk about swim baits that you know Marshall throws and that he's affiliated with. We are trying to bring more swim baits into outdoor alphas. Don't forget outdoor alphas here. Yeah, let's uh, talk about baits, dude. Yeah, we'll let's talk do, about baits, do right? So don't forget outdoor alphas, guys. Big sponsor of the. Of the pod letting us shoot here they have beginner entry level swim baits and that's what i wanted to start with ah trust me every swim bait that's out there i've either had thrown know about the from the roman made mother right here to um cheap little swim baits my first ever swim bait was a trout glide off amazon and i i upgraded the hooks mm-hmm. so but we have some nice entry level baits here from six cents six cents is a big sponsor of or a big part of outdoor alphas we've got you know multi-jointed glide baits uh everybody's i feel like every person who throws a swim bait needs to have a gander rail whether you've just started or you're a guy like ourselves I've who's been throwing. Ne- I've actually never thrown a gander. No, nope. <laughs> he's missing. Now we got to hook him up with one. Ganderels are cool because you can do the floating mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. you know the normal mm-hmm. the normal the normal line tie. So swim baits. When did you start getting really into swim baits, and what made you get into swim baits? So uh, the first swim bait I bought was a HUD, an eight inch HUD, which I did cast off. Just fucking everybody. That happens. Off. It's not everybody if you're gonna cast it off, it's when. Yeah, that's just how it goes, right? And then the first bait that I ever did good on was the six inch bull shad, the slow sink. Um, I went out one day and I I caught a PB, which was like six and a half at the time. This was 
freshman year of high school. And I was like, fuck, that's insane. This is, I mean, for me, that was a massive fish back then. You know, I was like, holy shit. Um, so I catch this big fish and I'm like, okay, now I gotta, you know, I gotta start getting around to getting more swim baits. So I get the bull shad. And then later on down the road, I, you know, I fish the wake shad, I fish all kinds of the 250. Um, but now I've really come into a style that I like and, and, you know, Kyle, it's cool because I can work with Kyle on certain baits and be like, hey, this needs to be changed or I like it like this or whatever. And we can that's, come to it. That's the we, best we feedback. Can to, we can come to a product that really works, um, which is what we're working on right now is this glide bait, which is a prototype. Um, what is that, 12 inches, 10 inches? Uh, 10 inches, yeah. So it's 10 inches, five and a half ounces, I believe. Um, this is a version two. We've got version three on the way. This is a bait that... I have put a lot of time and effort into and a lot of love. And check it and out. I, what's the what's the what's the glide action on it? So what we're going for right now, right, is is I like me personally, I like to fish my glides on a straight retrieve. And I know a lot of people are like, dude, you gotta fucking twitch the shit out of it and run it real fast and canine style. And I'm just like, no. Like I love to bomb it out over a point and just creep it in, right? And maybe a few from from and right. And this is what we're going for with this one is a very wide glide, but also with a nice darting and action. What's the where name? Stable. Is there a name? I think it, I think we're going with the retro glide. Don't quote me on that because that was just like a. How many how many a, podcasts? How many people have known about this? Is uh, the Patreon. This is out. This is out. This is out. Oh, like, this, people, like you can buy it. No, 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 no. This is. Oh, this okay, is like been people out. have been uh, people we've we've been, been talking ready about to buy it. it. Yeah. So we're still, but we're still. It's not close yet to be okay. honest. Sweet, sweet. Uh, I told Kyle whenever we started on this bait, this is like the second album is what he said, like, dude, the second album makes or breaks a band, you know, like, okay, you get one good first album, which is the Wake Walker. Well, you gotta make your second album good to prove that you're a good band, right? This is it, and I told him, from the very beginning that I am not going to go easy on him with this. I'm going to be very harsh and I'm not going to let him release a product that is subpar. And I like where this is going, but it's not there yet. So what do you feel like it's lacking currently? So right now um, we are lacking. It is sort of a um, sort of a teeter, right? This is just part of the glide. I what I, what I things I like about it is that it does have that really wide glide on a straight retrieve. The, I could almost compare it to a 250. If you fish a 250, 250. it has okay. a nice wide glide, but you can chop it too. And uh, this version two got a lot more stable than version one. So you're saying the initial one kind of was going up and down. The initial much. one did that a lot where you gotcha. have to be really and gentle that, with and it. And that's just really without learning. So that's another aspect of swim baiting that I've just done over the years is when you learn a bait, he's because he's new to swim baiting in, the, in a sense, we call him the swim bait goat. That's, mm -hmm. that's his uh, character with us. <laughs> I've had like three fucking people <laughs> ask me, uh, ask me, uh, you know, just like general like info on swim baiting. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? So that we, we, like, we like to test like how people follow us and whatnot. We'll just make shit up. Like this guy's a swim bait fucking god right here, dude. dude. <laughs> Been fucking swim baiting for like two and a half years. <laughs> so, so, but my point is, um, we were talking about learning. So what I was getting at is he hit me up the other day. I was like, you think I should buy tracers for my swim bait? I almost unfriended him at that point. And nothing wrong with that. If you have to do that, I was that's joking cool. around by the way. He, Okay, he says he's I was, joking. I was joking but around, well, by the way, because well, our boy is, Manny's got the ghost well, with tracers. Well, my thing is, is I was like, bro, you don't need those fucking tracers. To me, it's a hype thing. I was like, learn your bait. Yeah. Learn your bait with time yeah. on the water. I tell him every bait that's in my tackle box that I throw, I know the glide because I fished it for hours. I don't have to look at what color my yellow shit's doing. I'm just like, bro, I know what my bait's doing. Yeah. And, and again, that may be like the purest in me that may come off as a little mm. harsh, rough around the edges. If you have highlights, that's dope. Yeah. But for me, I'm to me, I'm like, bro, just learn your bait. Mm -hmm. Learn the bait. Learn the water. Mm -hmm. Learn the bait. So when I'm tossing a lure that I love, which I my favorite bait by far is the Matt Lures hard gill. Like mm -hmm. I that our hard shot. That's a great that's a great bait. I, I have <laughs> literally I when I tell people when I was coming up swim baiting that I have caught hundreds of pounds mm -hmm. of fish yeah, on that. Same thing with the six I inch bull shot. Legitimately Those are have caught. We would go out and I'd catch two fives in a day like nothing and do that five times a week. It's like I've literally Swim, probably caught dude, a thousand pounds. Swimmers, like lipless swimmers are just Killers. I don't know what it is, especially here in Texas, dude. They love lipless love it, swimmers. Love it. We'll talk about that one because this one's super special. Super to me. dope. Okay, uh, so but you learned it. You're learning it on the water. There's little tweaks, but you think once you get it down, there'll be less teetering, and you think it'll be comparable to a 250. Is the price point going to be similar? So we haven't decided on a price point yet. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to say too much to the point where I'm like, oh, all this stuff is true, and then yeah, this yeah, is yeah. all up in the air. But hey, yeah, if you're just like our friends, just blame it on Biden. Biden inflation. <laughs> Biden brought. It up 50 bucks. Yeah. Bonds America. <laughs> but we want to go 
you know, not now we're not trying to identically copy a 250, but you know, we are of course inspired by certain glides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this nice, the shape is very ambiguous, which is a, a typical, you know, throwback trait at this point. At, honestly, at this point in swim baiting culture, it's been around for a couple decades, maybe three. I mean, we're talking about the OGs, OGs mm -hmm. back in Cali throwing fucking castaic mm -hmm. plastics back in the 90s, right? But uh, maybe even 80s. I don't even yeah. know. I don't know where I'm at with that. But um, at this point, dude, you can only make a bait look like a fish so much. Yeah, you can I mean, only get. So I actually had a buddy who makes baits here in town just on the side. Mm -hmm. He like sent me a prototype of like a picture because again I, mm -hmm. I like to say that me Manny and uh, the crew that we're running around with were the OGs of bringing swim baiting into San Antonio mm -hmm. he kind of he always just checks in with me hey does this look like anything does this look he sent me a three piece bait I was like bro it looks like this thing called the flea shad mm -hmm. and he went I was like I was like I was like I, he was like fuck man I really tried to not and I was like I was like, at, at some point, bro, they all kind of look like yeah, two piece like, fish. What, what can you, what can <laughs> you know you what do, I mean? You know? It's just kind of like, what can you do? I was like, honestly, I'd change up a few things. I'd do this. I'd maybe put a different style tail. I maybe change the shape here a little bit to give it a more of a unique thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, make sure it doesn't affect swim too much. But mm -hmm. I was like, at the end of the day, you can only make a, a jointed bait look so much. A, yeah. The glide's even harder. I mean, oh, my favorite. I mean, the amount of fucking glides on the market is the, ridiculous. Dude, I think this is a pretty, like, this isn't even the final shape too the new one has more of like a cut uh it's like the, the and back that's a resin a little bit that's yeah. a resin so yeah. it's, so explain the process for people who don't know because i find it very interesting because we've got a guy in our group of friends mm -hmm. travis t polk t money he actually does his own bolt mold making yeah. where he'll like sit there again drink a beer smoke a bowl make a mold and then yeah, so come up with something and then pour it i am i am shit at pouring bait so i'll say that kyle can attest to it i just I don't know what it is. I don't have the steady hands. That's not that's not where I'm good, right? But that he is super good at it. Um, but basically, you have this little resin mixture. You pour the powder in, and then the little whatever the fuck, and you mix it up, right? <laughs> you pour whatever the you fuck. Pour, you pour it in there, and you mix it up, and then you you have your mold clamped together, and then you pour it in the top, and you have to do this like very particular pour where you have to be super like precise. And are you talking you about go, pouring plastics or pouring resin? Resin, resin. resin. So you can't go too fast. Cause then you got Cause bubbles. It'll, it'll, cl it'll clog the hole. So oh, it won't go, you'll go in. Right. But you can't go too slow or it'll harden in the bottom. So you gotta, I mean, you gotta be fucking perfect. And I, I, so that's why these baits cost, that's why they cost 150 bucks. Like, every single one of them is done by hand. I've personally seen it and it's like, I will, I grueling. will, I will back every price point of every swim bait, mm -hmm. especially the detailed ones, because I know the work mm -hmm. that's put into it. Mm -hmm. I do not support resellers. Mm -hmm. They can kick rocks, mm -hmm. but I will, I truly, I, I get the price points. Yeah. I, I, can, no, I mean, 100%, to yeah, make I mean, a lure that catches fish that you can sell on a market that's, you know, that, that make or breaks you, like you said, the second album yeah. makes it. Like, yeah. dude, it, yeah. it's a, it's a cutthroat world mm -hmm. for the people who catch fish, mm -hmm. but then it gets to the point where like when you're on it, you're on it. Yeah. So yep. that's cool. And what's kind of, it's kind of, kind of uh, what sucks about the whole, it's kind of just part of the industry. What's getting on my nerves with the custom baits is like a lot of the, the big box guys are starting to come out with stuff. Like what, what's the, there's like a KBD or KBD pro uh, shad. that looks like the KBD shad. The, it's, the, the Chad shad. The Chad shad. No, so that's okay. So did, that's, didn't that's, they make, that's awesome. No, okay. that's awesome. Because so, so that's, that's through KGB. Oh, no, they, no. They, they, they so you guys school me on basically that. Spro, a, or, or, you know, Spro. But the guy who made the original shape he is gets getting money. Dope. Yeah. So okay. he, Spro then, approach. Then, then so the, the original Chad Chad, I fucking love that bait. Yeah. I love all the KGB baits. Uh, the original Chad Chad is like 120 or 130, something like that. Maybe 140. Sorry, I don't know. It was a one-time <laughs> corporation yeah. did great. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a resin <laughs> bait, right? The Spro came in, basically was like, hey, dude, we could put these in Bass Pro Shop right and make them out of plastic we could design a model with you and it'll be 60 bucks right and we can get them to more hands da, 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 and we'll give you a cut so that's sick because Spro already has all the shit to do the ABS yeah. and all yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. and they and then he's like okay cool let's I just hope it doesn't like so the, so the, change the, you know, the bait makers I don't like I don't think it does I, I don't want people's main goal to be let me get picked up by a big box there yeah. that's well, what I don't yeah, want to happen yeah. I, mean, I like, want people to stay is, unique so so this thing about KGB is he still makes the resin Chad chat Dope. and so you can get both right gotcha. you can get the, and I'm sure they're gonna be completely different mm -hmm. thing right? oh the, I'm sure like they're the different the feel the way but it's just sick because it gives you know more people in entryway um, and KGB gets you know his cut which is great what are you saying so like my, uh, one of those questions that I do have is just like um, 
this is more of a question for your, uh, for, uh, your friend Kyle, but I mean, didn't somebody try replicating his actual swim? Oh bait? Yeah, yeah. No. So, so this is the diff. this is the other side yeah. of the coin. So we had a supplier from China or whatever. I mean, there's no law. I'm in, I, I'm in LEDs with like, with my personal business. Um, there's no loyalty over yeah, there. I so mean, don't, don't dude, expect so, it. So, so they made a, I mean, a direct fucking copy of the wake walker and made it into an abs bait and didn't ask Kyle for permission didn't ask anything and they're selling it for i don't know like eight bucks or something like that um but they're unpainted blanks so people can buy them um but that is a direct takeaway so what spro did was great that's the right way to do it but I, but, but this is directly taking away from the money that Kyle uses to feed his kids, uses yeah, to yeah, yeah, support yeah. his and business and shit like that. So that I do not. Uh, no, down. I don't think anybody yeah. would ever support and that. My, my biggest. There are people who will. Yeah, there are so people that, who get upset and th- will. Th- that's the problem that I'm, I'm having right now. Cause Ooh, I've seen, I saw what people, I want to talk into. Mm-hmm. Right? I, this, I, is, this is juicy. I saw people online, you know, uh, legitimately glorifying this bullshit. Yes, you know? They're and, like, they're like, Oh, finally you don't have to pay one sixty or whatever. God forbid somebody gets money for their hard fucking it, work. That, well that, that, Jesus. that, so that's also the weird side of the coin that I have to live with is where some of my friends are like, oh, you hate capitalism so much, but you own your own business. I'm like, bro, I own 100% of the means of production. I get up at we know 6 where the in money's the fucking going. morning. Yep. I work all fucking day. I go to bed at midnight. Mm-hmm. I answer emails after mm-hmm. working, making sure my wife and daughter are taken care of and bills are paid. It's like, I, I can't change the fucking system we live in. Yep. You know what I mean? The, you're, you're mad at me for, oh, I'm making money. If I make more money, it's because I spent more time focusing on yep. the business. It's not because I raised prices yep. for no fucking or reason. it's not because I just ripped somebody else's yeah, concept. it's not like I just hey, like, saw they, a great product and <laughs> took it. Look at that. They already did the work for us. Yeah, so let's yeah, just yeah, remake yeah, yeah. that so shit. So nobody's going to support Jesus. that. I don't think anybody there are, will. There are. No, there, there are. There are. There are lots of people online. Painters, bro. There's lots of people online who, and Kyle did a drop just a minute ago of some blank flea shads um, for 120. They're lower than retail, no paint um, that people resold. And that was organic though, because it's like, Hey, here, I'm not going to paint these. You guys go fucking wild and sell them. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. That's yeah. a good thing. Right? That, that is a good and, thing. And, and, but people, okay. So even my buddy, Nick messaged the guy who imported those. Right. And the dude was oh, like, so this is like a guy in America who I, took the time. So, to have okay. It so yeah. this guy, this guy, what he said, right. Uh, I forgot what his company was called, but Nick sent a message and was like, you know, roughing him up a little little bit just because fuck off yeah fuck off right but the dude was like he said don't shoot the messenger like i'm just importing them and i'm I'm like bro you are a part of the problem if you're buying these and selling them you're (laughs) affecting the market it's not don't shoot the messenger you're not the messenger yeah at that point point, yeah 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 he's like bro i'm just i'm just buying blanks and i'm just them. them. that's what i'm saying like (laughs) oh so that guy was painting them no no he was just selling the blanks for people to paint right and people are like you know sick like oh i can get this for eight dollars instead of whatever but the the problem there is that all the work that Kyle and all the work that, you know, now me and, and other people put into this bait and the amount of time and effort, right? Kyle had to learn how to paint from scratch, learn how to pour resin from scratch, all this shit. And I'm sure he's still fucking in debt from all this. You know, he hasn't made his money back. No way. I don't, you know? I don't think people all that, realize what it, it just takes. goes down the fucking drain. Cause some, some dude over there is like, Oh, we'll but, just call but, it. Uh, again, know? this is, I'm, I'm going to be true to me. The, that's the ugliness of capitalism. Yeah. I mean, that's just the ugliness like, of what can capitalism. you do other than, other than what Kyle did and make a drop of blanks yeah. for everybody who, who I'm going to, I'm going to export the labor, make it cheaper and sell more products at a lower Shout price. Shout out to, uh, to Danny from Planked. I really liked his paints on the flea shad. Those were sick. He bought like five of them and he resold them. And that's like, I'm going to say that dude, the that, helps, bit, that helps the painters. That helps dude. Builder, that's what like I'm saying. Swim bait, the swim bait culture, and I again, I consider myself a boomer in that that I don't keep up with all the ins and outs of it. But I think the swim bait culture is crazy how it's transformed from just bait makers to now painters, mm-hmm. add on to yep. the to the industry. Yep. And the, to the, the, the real issue is that everybody, we're all chasing the fish, the, the issue, which is great, which is amazing, <laughs> yeah. right? We're all ch- this all this bullshit is for the mm-hmm. fish, right? But, but the issue is that everybody wants everything like fucking this. They mm-hmm. need everything immediately. My well, phone, my Wi-Fi. I need to work fast. I need to be able to drive as fast as I fucking can oh, yeah. to get to everywhere. Yeah. I don't need to slow down on anything. And if I can't get this bait immediately, 
I am pissed. Yeah, like, yeah. Come on, people. Uh, you gotta you, learn a yeah, little bit. You of, just, you know? just, just let those people be who yeah. they, you know, what they want. Because yeah, you're not gonna, the, the people who support you, the people yeah. who are down, the people who like Roland, who are there, like yeah. fuck that guy, fuck the the mm-hmm. copycats, all that. That's there. I guess what I was saying is, I just hope bait makers don't try to chase the money again, because money will yeah. ruin everything. Yeah. I don't want bait makers to chase what happened with Chad Chad mm-hmm. to be their end goal. Yeah. That's what I'm concerned I mean, like, with. Okay, I don't so want a bait maker to be like, oh, I just can't wait for a big box. Yeah. company to pick yeah. me up with throwback we are of course shooting for bigger goals right mm-hmm. like it would be so sick if we could have a plastic woody in the store but that's not the main goal we love like like kyle loves to do this shit and loves to this is baits. always this is just going to be your entry into the market i would say which i'm out talking with the owner here maybe we can get some mm-hmm. some shads when y'all do get them mm-hmm. built up mm-hmm. and there's a bit better mm-hmm. stock because mm-hmm. obviously it's more monetary yeah. to sell them as mm-hmm. a push strategy yeah. but whenever you do get to a point where you have plastic you know yeah. little but swimmers that, you know for the guy who yeah. can throw this mm-hmm. on on a rod that like a you could throw anything on you could throw this yeah. on any seven foot mm-hmm. rod with any like yeah. you know we'll get into that in a little bit here but um that's the whole thing that's what i want to do with this company here in, in outdoor alphas is i want to help the market be able to just come in buy a rod for 120 bucks and buy a swim bait for 30 bucks because it's a plastic yep. from a really yep. expensive really well thought out and real well built mm-hmm. 150 dollars lure yep. but it gets people on the water and it yep. introduces them into swim baits and, and then like, slow the, it's kind of like the the way i took with kayaks, right? When mm-hmm. I first bought a kayak, I bought a $200 kayak and then I bought a $500 kayak and then yeah. I bought a thousand dollar kayak and yeah. then I got really good and I got sponsored yeah. by kayak. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's, this is going to get you to that level mm-hmm. of appreciation yep. and it's all about just getting it into the, 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 the layman's yep. hand, right? Yep. To, so real quick, just so we can do a plug before we get too much into it. So all these baits up here, obviously you can throw with, you can't throw with regular lures except or regular rods and reels, except for maybe this one. Um, and maybe that one, depending on the weight, what's the weight on that one? This one is uh, three uh, right at three ounces. Right? <laughs> gotcha. You could, you're, yeah, if your elbow's throw. gonna hurt, your shoulder's gonna hurt, you're gonna have what I call el- toad elbow instead of tennis elbow. I've been holding <laughs> up too many toes, yeah. Yeah. but you really want to throw uh, like a vehicle specific rod, and that's gonna be something like this. This is a very entry level swim bait setup. It's a uh, this, Dio this is actually my first swim bait rod, hundred dollar so rod, yeah, hundred dollar like, rod, like, eight real. foot broomstick. Yeah. You could throw fucking anything on yeah. it, any of these, but ba- even this bait, even though yep. you'd probably hurt your back after a while, you could still throw this bait on it. You can't throw that on a seven foot medium mm-hmm. heavy. You're not. You're not moving nope. it. Um, and then this is a Dio Alexa, um, and basically this combo I think in store is like shoot 300 bucks. And that's again coming in at a lot higher than your normal academy setup, but it is what you need to throw those bigger baits. Mm-hmm. So you can get that here and we're gonna work on getting baits like this that you can start to mm-hmm. learn how to throw swim baits on a regular rod. Mm-hmm. So that's cool, man. Um, so how long, so now that we've already kind of covered that, uh, let's talk about this plastic that I've been seeing you kill it on. <laughs> yeah, so this, okay, so these are the, the Bellows Gill. Uh, these are the 5.8s, but they make a bunch of different sizes. Um, all these plastics that I have to throw are from G Crack. Very great company, great people. Um, I love those guys. Um, what are those trying to imitate? For so, again, so this is going to be your. I would, you know, it's called the Bellows Gill, so bluegill imitation. But to be honest, it imitates any sort of bait fish. As you see, you got this shad color. Um, this one, you know, could imitate a, a big gizzard shad. It's got that wide profile. It can imitate whatever, some kind of creature on the bottom, a leech. It's a very know. unique yeah. bait. I've never it's seen unique. it. So, see. so this is um, one of the big things that I... smell to it? Yeah, it does have a smell. It smells like Fritos, right? It does have a Fritos. Yeah, it smells like, it smells like Frito Lays. It, yeah. like, it smells like dog, <laughs> so that, dog paws. So that is, that is <laughs> SAF material, which is shrimp, aminos, and... Um, Something else. I'm so sorry. I forgot that. But the SAF material is completely unique to the G Crack stuff, um, and I that's a thing that I'm a big believer in. Um, scent. Basically, okay. So here's the thing about scent, right? Scent only works when it's water based, and and or salt based, right? Uh-huh. Does oil based scents do not work because a bass cannot process that through its like so, smell receptors, right? It cannot process oil. It can only process, you know, salts, aminos, and water. So this stuff is the best formula to to have that sort of like, okay, a fish is gonna pick this up. It's not gonna smell it from a distance. It's gonna pick it up and go. It's just real. Gonna, it's just real. gonna yeah, put it gonna, in his and mouth and, it's and gonna give go, you okay, that real. half second yeah. longer to drive yeah. that hook. Yep, hundred yeah, percent. So and another big thing about these is that whenever I'm out on the water, especially fishing, you know, like Ladybird Lake, a place that is just 
<laughs> fucking, I mean, pressure, hammered with pressure. Uh, with. Tons of people throw swim baits there. I mean, they've just seen everything. I think a big. <laughs> it's the hype beast place to be. A, if, seriously, if you're, yeah, if, if, you're if you've bait, ever yeah. thrown a swim bait in your life. But the biggest thing that has brought me success there is doing something different from everyone else. Throwing a bait like this, those fish have never fucking seen it. I mean, maybe a few people, right? But you want to throw stuff that those fish have never seen. It just to me. That like okay, of course a fish is gonna eat a senko, right? You'll you'll have your bites. That, and but that, that, to me, when I do run into that massive fish, that teener, fifteen pound or whatever, that's seen everything, right? I want to make sure that my presentation is different, right? So it doesn't go, oh, I've seen that before. I'm gonna eat it. No, no, I need to be throwing something completely off the wall. Um, if anybody's seen me throw the the emoki mushi bug too, that one's a really great presentation that I throw instead of a senko. It's the same like weightless style, but it has like the little hairs on it. All the g-crack stuff to me is very unique and they really try and push the boundaries of what you know what what a lure can be and and what kind of presentation you can give to a fish like that so that tip he just gave that's a fucking patreon worthy tip <laughs> yeah, um, <that's> obviously <laughs> because that just comes from knowledge of being on the water and dude i've, I've said it a hundred times shit. try try shit that and, the and fish haven't seen yeah. because i think i think that's another that's another just a, a thing that if you've been on the water for as long as we have and you fish as much as we have you get that it's you mm -hmm. realize that you're like well no wonder i'm killing it yeah. on this body of water because they've never seen a mat lures yeah you know, hard chat yeah. or whatever, or yeah. that, or this, yeah. or that, but that, that, that's the thing like that. That's, that's a $10 what, what, a month tip right there. What, Throwing stuff that's not been thrown before what, will get you bit. What I've found, especially like, you know, lakes like lady bird and places that get a lot of pressure is that even swim baits that don't get thrown as much. I don't know how many percentage of swim bait anglers are in Austin. Like out of all the anglers, what you have maybe less than 10% that are throwing swim baits constantly. Right. But it's still enough where those fish see, I do, I've, I've thrown a canine out there and you throw a canine and those fish are like, Oh no, I know what that is. I've seen that shit. Dude, but freaking Jared. It's, 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 <laughs> Jared, it's going, who else is out there? Going, Manny's out there it's now. It's going back. It's almost going in, Jay. in Jay. The, like reverse. Oh, Jay. So <laughs> what I think is that I throw shit like the Roman made mother and, uh, baits that are like the mob walker, a lot larger than average. These are how, how many bites have you got on the mother? That's always been uh, a bait I've, that I just. I've probably caught fifteen fish on this one. Um, this any, one in particular, big, big, uh, biggest. Uh, biggest was probably like seven. I caught a couple sevens on it, but nothing, nothing massive. River, yet. lake, this is fairly new lakes. These are all lakes, lakes, lakes fish. but um, like I think now you have this thing where fish get used to a certain size of a bait they're like oh nine inches i've seen that now you have to go you have to go bigger to get a fish and we're to gonna go. be at that point yeah. fucking five years from now where I, we're I know, fucking massive yeah like the, well, that's you know the, the next step is gonna <laughs> be like you know the frenzy the mother chaser stuff like that that is just absolutely massive but those fish have not seen something like that so you can go both ways you know i mean those fish in lake austin have seen a depths 250 a I mean, million, a million times, times yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. I mean, geez, so, so that attest to that, right? Real quick, side note: um, the guys at Hill Country Swim Baits said, "Go throw this bait, get bit." We trust in you, mm -hmm. bro. Went out on Super Bowl Sunday, my favorite time to fish because everybody who can't yeah, fish yeah. is yeah. watching football, mm -hmm. and I'll say that always. Mm -hmm. um, and I we were on the water, dude. I caught two six and a halves. Mm -hmm. I caught Albert. Four or five point. swim baits, uh, uh, small mouth, and bro, that was, it's because they hadn't seen that lure. Yeah. It's because that yeah. lure hadn't 100, been seen. hundred percent. I don't know how else to, yeah. Manny was like, well, you're fucking killing it, but you're throwing a depth. Yeah. You're throwing a depth. Yep. They haven't seen this. Yeah. That's about? why I don't even have a depth in my arsenal. Okay. I don't, like a lot of the shit that and I try and keep it different is because oh, they see a lot of that shit. So get creative and get creative and modifying your lures, trying different rigs, put, I, I even in the winter time, dude, I fucking throw weights on this thing and I sink it all the way down, you know, in the 30 foot and try and fish it. Like do, do different do shit. Do abnormal shit. Abnormal shit. That's like, cool. people, like, cause you know, you'll have everybody tell you the proven stuff, right? But to get to another level, to, to get off like fishing, you know, you get in plateaus for any, any sport, right? You get into a plateau. Yeah. Have and to, then and then you finally get to learn and then the plateau gets longer you know and then you get a longer plateau but you have to keep pushing that plateau to get better and the next step or the step for me is 
changing what I'm doing, trying something that I wouldn't normally try, go fish a spot that I hadn't fished before, just throw a bait in a weird way. Dude, sometimes I'll fucking fish this thing like a topwater. I'll, I'll see moss and I'm like, okay, fire it way back up in there. Oh, but and I can I fish see it on how top that would get, it's it crushed. That yeah. just comes just, from you being an angler. That You, you can't mm-hmm. teach that. Mm-hmm. Were, were you telling me to talk closer? Or were yeah, you, I was, oh, I was okay, like, hey, gotcha, talk gotcha. closer. My bad. Well, <laughs> dude, so a little <laughs> add-on about being healthy and having core strength. I am on a broken chair. So like this <laughs> whole time, I'm like trying to use my core to stay straight. So, but real quick. So dude, that's awesome, man. That's just, again, that's, that's a $10 a month fucking tip right there. And again, alluding to that, I threw a lure that the Guadalupe river had never seen in that section. And I fucking killed yep. it. And it's because they didn't see the bait. Dude, I had the first six and a half just came and shamooed it. And I was like, bro, <laughs> that, that fish was like, bro, look at that shad. Look at that shad. I ain't never seen that. Where are you from? Um, on, Boom. on the different side of things, I, I want to talk about the flea shad because okay. this is a bait that speaking of the resale market, I see this bait go up more than any other throwback bait. And this is the bait that I have the most success on. I catch more big fish on this bait than any, maybe the mob walker rivals it just because it's big (laughs) and that's just what happens you get big fish on a big bait but the flea shad to me is like the pinnacle of like hey we're doing different things to get bit so you know most swimmers they have like i'm sure the i don't know how the mat lures the strong shad it swims like this right i mean it has an s it it, it has different it's like different like it depends on how you fish it i like to fish so i like to get the slow sink and obviously clarity yeah you know conditions the bull shad it fishes and nothing against the bullshit bullshit catch fish all of these catch fish the bullshit fishes it's like a head hunting right so it's going back and forth right and there's a lot of it's almost like a snake like an s action right this bait does not do that at all right this is a very tight wobbling and it fishes like like really tight right and you fish it fast and even if you fish it slow it's just very subtle right and a lot of people pick that up and i think they throw it and they're like this bait doesn't have any action like i'm gonna sell it and they sell it immediately right and they don't give this bait the time that it deserves i would say wow. that that that's that's true i like that yeah the, i think the the mat lures especially the bigger ones like mm-hmm. the seven and nine inch mm-hmm. have a really on top of the really tight, which is good, the, the realistic look of yeah. the mat lures is yeah. just unrivaled. Well, unrivaled. To, to me, realism, right, when it comes to a, we have gizzard chad, but this applies to anything, trout, whatever bait fish you have, your little threadfin chad. Um, when you see a bait fish running fast, which is typically how you fish this bait fast, right? It's not swimming like this, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's just vibrating. Trying it's to save its just life. Like this, just <laughs> right? It's all the muscles are going, it's just vibrating. And it'll, and, it'll and jump you, porpoise, like whatever, but it's not swimming like this. And you know what's feeding off this, of that? The fish that's going and, after. And this is what fish is like that. To me, this is so realistic. When I see it burning through, and then when you stop it, it goes shoom, to the side. Yeah, that's and what I, I was, mean, damn. Gee, so, I mean, just beautiful. So that's its own design. It's its own thing. I was going to say, my favorite thing about the uh, mat lures mm-hmm. is that when you do kill it, yeah, oh it my God, it does like, a dirty. Yeah, and, I, and I don't, I hardly. It does, it does a sick 180, and usually I've caught so many big fish on the 180 mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, look, he's running, he's running. Look at the dumbass. Stops, stops, turns and then around, and then boom. So and it's for me, like, I, I find that that works in some lakes, but like in Lake Austin, it doesn't really work that well because, no, because I've never cause, fished cause Lake shad, Austin other sh- than a tournament. Because a shad doesn't do that when it's getting chased. No. It doesn't stop. It doesn't turn around, right? No. But for me, the best retrieve on this is just you know what the next the shit out of it. You, you know? know what the next rendition of swim baits are gonna have to be what? swim baits that jump out the water. Yeah, because that's a oh, real th- no. I've, dude. I've been high. Well, as fuck. Have you heard I've Butch been Brown? Have you heard Butch Brown huh? talk? Butch Brown says that he would reel a two fifty up and get it right next to the boat, and then flip it over on the other side of the boat and smack it on the water, and they would shoot under the boat and eat it. No, dude, like it was a trout jumping. I, I have water. literally like, witnessed shit. so many big fish chasing bait fish and then that fish goes airborne yes and it, that's it real. only adds fuel to the fire so i've been super high thinking like bro if i could get a buddy to make a fucking swim bait that could jump <laughs> out the water and land back well, in and like you a ever, foot have away you, have you ever on the kayak pulled it out of the water and have one boom dude like come I, out the on the kayak i've had all I've the had, time i've had shit i've had a fish take the top toad sitting i've put the rod yeah, down yeah, yeah. And it, <laughs> so it's like i think i've seen that video yeah too. dude, dude I, I mean they I, will I come. literally have thought so, in my house like dude Dude, if I could find a way to get a bait to get to the surface, hop out, hop back in, <laughs> you're catching a 12. So so here's here's another thing too, right? So fish 
uh, they're like bass, bass in particular are opportunistic, right? And they look for the best avenue. And lazy. Yeah, they're, they're okay. I wouldn't say they're lazy. Uh, well, but, I think in but certain they, conditions, in certain conditions they can be lazy. But but a big bass can move fast, super I fast. I mean, my biggest on this is eight eight, right? Uh -huh. And it fast came in hot, yeah. and it's like, dude, this is a massive fish. It, mo it moved, they but move, it's got a broom. So I wouldn't say I would tail. I wouldn't say lazy. You uh -huh. know what I mean? I'd say they just they they are they're, they're smart. conservative with their energy, and mm -hmm. they'll use it if they see that opportunity is right. And for me, creating those opportunities are a lot of times giving that fish a place to pin the bait. And that comes from either a bottom contact, which is simple as, oh, I can come down on this jig and the jig can't go any further down. So it can't go anywhere. Oh, so, right? so you're, so you're talking about, then, this is, this is another $10, $10 worth of information here. Uh, so you like the parts of where they could, you like the ambush yes. points of, uh, you need of to look, shoving. Yeah. You need to look for the spot on the spot, right? So if you're fishing, like I said, the bottom creeping a soft bait on the bottom, um, fishing a concrete wall right next to it. And they'll, hit the wall dude, dude, eat, yeah, right? dude. because they know the fish can't swim that way dude. anymore and then another one that people don't think about too often is that like you'll hear a lot of people that say like topwater fish just kind of cap out like you don't catch you won't catch a 15 pounder on top water, right? Like, either, you know, that's like that's like something that that's like something that's a something that's just accepted. kind of ingrained, right? Mm -hmm. But to me the top of the water is as solid no, no, as no, the no, bottom. No, no, like right? I said, that oh. is another pressure point that those fish <laughs> yeah. can come straight up. That's why and I the, want and the, the fish flying. cannot swim any farther up. Yeah, once it gets all the way to the no, top, no, so the, boom, the fish like that's realize the that's that is a how we are bound by space and time. Yes, a fish realizes and, and they're big, bound and, by oxygen. And big fish, one hundred percent real. T Polk, T Money will tell you he caught a to do. So everybody, you know, what's so annoying is that everybody loves ivy. Right, ivy's the number one mm -hmm. fish in the country. I let pro proposed to my wife at that lake mm -hmm. when it was 10% full. I fished it my whole mm -hmm. life. My our family ranch is 45 minutes away. Travis caught a 12 and a half on about a 12, 12 and a half on a frog. <laughs> just a silly old frog on a shitty old rod. Fucking just being Travis. Mm -hmm. Threw it over a log and he said it hit and he said the bass just kept. He kept going and going and going and going. And he was just like, that's when I knew it was giant. It was 26 wow. inches. Wow. 26 that's, inches on a fucking dude, academy I mean, frog. They will eat a topwater. You mm -hmm. have to give them the opportunity to eat it. The best thing, too, is when you can pin the frog. So not only do you have on top, right? But if you can pin it against the log, then you have a second What do, what do you call those casts? We call them fuck it so casts. I, fuck it. Figure, <laughs> out, figure so, out how to catch yeah, it so later. I would say like. I don't make a lot of like fuck it casts. I, I tend to like position better. My my opinion, like there's mm. always a good angle. There's always a great angle. Uh, sometimes, man, it's just sometimes a, there's fuck not. Fuck it. Sometimes there's not. There, there <laughs> I'm gonna are. hit that pocket of reeds. Looking, I'm looking. I guess I don't even have a good word for it, but I guess pressure points, right? And you can have two pressure points that align, right? So the pre two here would be Damn, like dude, that, two that's, here, right? That's big be. money. That's big money advice. So, so you're so saying two, top of the water, top of the water, concrete, concrete wall. wall. That's you're a, talking that's bottom of the water, concrete wall. Bottom of two. the water log. Whenever you get two like that, right? Oh my God, that's you, almost like, like you're just increasing your. So, uh, so think about it backwards too. Move that bait out into the middle, and there's a fish sitting there, and he sees it go by, and he's like, "Uh, that fish could swim left, right, up, down, all over the fucking damn. place. I can't get to that, right? That's damn. that's how I think about it. You know what I mean? Um, it's you gotta you gotta find those pressure points, and make the bait escape. Fast, right? Like the flea shad, I fish it fast, it gets away, but leave it in a vulnerable position. So it's like this game of like, oh, I want to give you a little bit, but I can't give you too much to think that it's just not real. Damn, you know dude. What I mean? that, that's, dude, that's some, that's some good, that's some good, this guy's been on even, the water even, a long even, time. Even angles, like if you're fishing uphill, right? Uphill is a good way to fish because no matter how far the fish follows it, it has this increasing pressure like, oh shit, I got to eat it. I got to <clears> eat it before <throat> I get to too shallow, before it gets out or before it goes, right? And the closer I get, the less room it has to go anywhere so when it, boom right there this, you know this I mean? is just like a personal anecdote but man with that now that ivy's just getting more popular and popular mm -hmm. we get to go all over because we're in small boats mm -hmm. and all that and we've mothershipped around in the john boat that yeah. my buddy travis has and dude there's just one wall that i always throw no matter how grim or how <laughs> little i feel like i'm gonna i can't it's i'm compelled to throw my 10 inch um fish hunt bonehead that mm -hmm. guy doesn't even in business anymore mm -hmm. that that lure glides the most of any lure mm -hmm. it's insane it's like 10 inches 10 to 12 inches mm -hmm. i'll throw it i have to throw it because there's just fucking boulders the size of cars <laughs> and the top of the water 
and nothing else. Yeah. Ugh. So I'm just like, one of these days I'm gonna come here and the Ivy record is gonna get caught on it and everybody's fishing live scope like a motherfucker down there. I'm gonna catch one on a fucking swim bait, super cold ass day, but there's a boulder the yeah. size of a house here, Your pressure a points. cliff, and then the top of the water. And I'm just like, Vroom. add those points Vroom. to a spot. Vroom. Keep, and it's just know. like, dude, one day I'm gonna get fucking I, we say it. We say we're gonna get cream pie. That's what I say. It's like fuck. It's gonna get demolished. So that's super cool, man. Well, I do have a rant. Like I said, I got a couple random questions from. But we got one from uh, somebody online that's following us now. But this, this man, he wanted me to ask this. Okay, okay. I don't know the details. He wants me to you to fill in the details. So it involves you, Manny, grilled cheese, and a drag show. What's up with that? What happened there? Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, fuck, I never, I never like would have. That's a good question, right? You Man, said all those. Man, Manny was like, break him down with that. So fill, fill us in. Manny said <laughs> it was me, him, a drag show, and a grilled cheese, bro. What happened? Okay, so so I used to work at Burrow Cheese Kitchen, which nope. is a food truck downtown Austin. Cool, cool. So there's the grilled cheese part, right? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Uh, is that is that Jared's yes, spot? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. So that, all I the swim baiters at, tying I know, in. I know. All the swim baiters and BMX <laughs> guys all fucking yeah right there. It's, like a, it's like a thing but um super fun place to work at by the way that was that was a uh, that was a fun job that was just like it was just enjoyable but anyway so we were working this event at the waterloo park and i now that you say it now i know it's a drag show that didn't even that didn't even process to me. I was like, oh, here we go, another fucking event. It's gonna be busy, right? And now I'm like, wow, it was a drag show. It was a drag so show. We, so he, I guess he snuck in to, yeah. the, to the drag Man, show. Man, he snuck, snuck in. in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but it was. But it, I, but yes, it, it was, <laughs> we got him. I got, I got, hold on, I got you, man. I got you. It was not to go to the drag show. It was yeah, to yeah. get one of those famous grilled cheese. That's sandwiches. what everybody I, says I, at first. Give them so much shit for this <laughs> grilled cheese sandwich, right? Yeah, so man, anyway, let's go get I, anyway, cheese I, between two buns. <laughs> Yo. So anyway, I made, him the best, I made him the best fucking grilled cheese of his entire That's life. What's up. That's what's up, man. That was, yeah, that, I, ho I wanted to wow. hit you with a uh, Nardwar style hey, question. Hey, That's so hilarious. Just picture Manny with a grilled cheese. Yes, bitch. Dude, <laughs> leaving a drag I made, show. I made him the long, tall Texan, which is... The, which is <laughs> I'm sure he wanted that long, tall <laughs> Texan. Long, tall Texan. God, dude, it's going to be epic, dude. That's awesome, man. Oh, I appreciate that. That's <laughs> Manny was like, dude, it'll be great. Um, That's great. Shout out to Manny B. Again, the guy's like my brother. So, so funny. Um... Um, and then what else? Um, I had a, oh, the one from a guy named Sebastian, been a supporter of us for a minute. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's really his, good cook. His, uh, um, he came to the throwback meetup. I met his son. Dude. His son's got a beanie. Bro, he'll awesome fucking bro, he'll, yeah. fucking, awesome. he'll fucking buy anything you got, bro. Anyways, he's the best customer. Great guy. Very, yeah. very supportive. Really good cook. Really good cook. Can throw yeah. it down. And he know. And you know why I like him? Because he knows who the OGs are in town. He's always like all these damn swim baiters. Y'all don't know the y'all don't know the Godzillas that started it. But the funny thing is, he wanted to know what's your favorite lure to throw and what's your rod and reel combo that you just that's the one you bread go and to. butter. All right, so bread and butter. Like you got, you got one day to fish. You got you some shit changed up, and you got a job. So, you got one day so, to fish. What so, are you throwing? So this was actually a good uh, question that I got on the Patreon too. So I yeah, made a big, I was, a big I was video. About to say yeah. that. So I run a Leviathan Omega medium heavy. That's my favorite rod to throw. I can throw the Bellows Gill 5.8 on it. I can throw the Flea Shad, the Wake, um, little soft baits, all that. Um, that rod is super parabolic and it's a lot lighter than most people would probably go for. And you throw it on what reel? Uh, the Calcutta Conquest 200 um, HG. So the six, two to one or six, eight to one, whatever it is, the six to one. And um, that right there, that setup is just money for me. I love the six, eight to one. Cause it's like the perfect gear ratio for anything. I can fish the flea shad fast. I can fish the bells gill really slow. Um, that rod and reel, I mean, it does literally everything for me. Um, everybody's got one. So, and then, and then like a few baits for that, literally what I would carry in a backpack is flea shad, wake Walker, bellows gill, and then a uh, little like the unique gill probably has a good paddle tail soft bait and then some sort of little glide like the chad chad or maybe this one i'll throw this on there um Dope. but yeah that that uh medium heavy is just 
my favorite rod ever. It just, it, it's just so all around and so nice. And everybody, and everybody over, you just keep fucking fish. Pinging. It's just Swiss Army. Yeah. It's just Swiss Army knife. Everybody, yeah, yeah, and me. what's cool is everybody has their own. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, it's a great. Lot of pe- a lot of people think I fish way too softer rods, but I think fishing off the paddleboard <laughs> makes me fish. Rods Dude, like that because I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. so a lot of guys hit me up. They're like, "What do you throw? What do you throw? What do you throw?" Like, and I'm okay, like, "Here's what I'm I don't throwing think. regular seven, f- anything under two ounces. <laughs> I'm throwing on a regular <laughs> rod and a regular reel." Can we shit on Manny a little more? What's up, yeah. Manny? Yeah. I don't know how the fuck you fish everything on braid and the stiffest fucking rod nah, possible. No, no, no. I got a, I gotta, a glide bait with like the treble hook on the front. Dude, I'm like, yo, I'm I got, like, I got, I gotta have my boys back. I gotta have my boys back here and here. And I'm like, what the fuck? You got five hooks. <laughs> and braided line. Like, so no damn. no the braided line shit the braided line I am shit. So I'm I'm the opposite. I I I will I I'm Manny and I will be it the works, biggest. It works for you. Will guys. be the biggest yeah. pro, like pushers of the line, and I get in Austin is different, especially on Lake Austin. Yeah, but in general. I don't think the line you throw makes a fuck of a mm-hmm. difference. I think the casting distance mm-hmm. and then the parameters yeah. that okay. we talked about yeah. about See, the, that's where I differ, right? And I respect everybody's fishing style. You guys get it done. Sick. Yeah. And we I go and the, the other way. I throw as light line as possible. Oh, I couldn't. So I fish I fish the uh, heaviest I fish is 20 pounds. I don't go any heavier than that. 20 pound fluorocarbon. I run fluorocarbon on everything. Um, 20 pound for literally the mother and the mob walker. I and, have a rod uh, that's dedicated to 20 I, pound. I, I go down, and I go down to 12 and even 10 on, on these little baits. Mm-hmm. For this stuff, I'm throwing 15. You, then, you laugh. And then 17. I know you'd probably throw so this, fucking 150 no, no, pound no, 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 no. <laughs> This bait right here, how, about how many ounces is about? Two, one, maybe? One. one? Okay, yeah. I'd throw this lure on like a seven foot medium heavy. You throw like a fucking chatterbait on that. Mm-hmm. 200 size reel, mm-hmm. any lose 200. Yeah, no, that's what I, yeah. And I throw it on 25 pound braid, yeah. 20 pound braid. And see that, and that works. And 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 works. The, here's why I've always said, out. people are always like, well, they, do they see it, do that? Outdoor Alphas makes a really cool braid with tight line braid that's black and green. Mm-hmm. So I think that just mixes yeah. in with water anyways. Yeah. But before that, I was just throwing Power Pro, just whatever the mm-hmm. fuck. I would throw, the biggest thing is we'd fish waters, crystal clear yeah. waters, yeah. like, like, five foot you could yeah. see the bottom on yeah. spring fred rivers they didn't give a fuck yeah. what the line was mm-hmm. it was more about fishing with your eyes fishing yeah. the parameters set yeah like my coolest cast to catch ever was with the mat lures i saw a fucking a big fish just roasting shad on the bank and i was like <laughs> threw right at it and called it in and it literally was like <laughs> I, I love that shit this, i have so many like right that. at the surface Dude. and i was like bro it don't matter you can yeah. fucking throw a goddamn you I'd, know so here's the way I think about it, right? This is a little food for thought for you. Ooh, um, ooh, not, not, <laughs> ooh. No, no, no. So I want to know. want to know. Right? You're in this scenario, right? You, I mean, you from fucking smash every eight, nine, ten pounder, right? Braid, whatever, doesn't matter. When you finally do manage to uh, make a miracle mm-hmm. happen and put your bait in front of a fifteen pounder, and that fish goes, uh, I see the line. And because a 15 pounder has been because, around because it's seen braided line. It knows everything. Right. And then when I want to be ready, I want to make sure everything's right. I want my line to be perfect. I want the bait to be perfect. So I want that fish to go and look at it and have no doubt that it's real. No doubt in its mind. So I don't care if that costs me like, oh, you know, I have to spool more often or, oh, I have to spend a little bit more money online. I want it to be Perfect, because I'm not after every eight pound. Yeah, you're after, after the bigger pound. ones. I want to catch the biggest fish I can <laughs> possibly catch, nice. and that requires everything for me. I give that fish the credit. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You you basically respect the yeah. fish making it to 25 years. 100. percent You're like all that you fish know? is fucking seen. Yeah. Bill dances that's, lure the fucking yeah. little helicopter on top exactly. to everything. So that's what I. That's where I okay. stand. I, I'll, I'll take. Know? I I have yeah. I have yeah. one rod. It's a it's mm-hmm. a big Daiwa XSB mm-hmm. like that. I've got a lose power, mm-hmm. uh, lose a super duty on it. 300. It's lined up mm-hmm. with 20 pound Invisex. Mm-hmm. I throw my boneheads on it. Mm-hmm. I would say I th- the bigger the bait. I don't take back that I don't ever throw Invisex. I do, mm-hmm. but it's only on big baits mm-hmm. because I want that stretch yeah, yeah. in case of a backlash yeah, yeah, or of a need, shitty cat. A little bit, so for, I mean, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. So <laughs> this is, okay. So again, <laughs> this is I, I do have a ten inch, eleven inch lure that I do throw on a big ass rod on fucking twenty five pound mm-hmm. Invisex. Yeah. So I, I throw it. I yeah. get it. But the majority of the time when I'm just fishing, whenever I'm throwing a mat lures, I'm throwing a five inch Medina yeah, glide. I can get away with whatever. And there's so, probably also not a fucking twenty pounder in the quad. 
Absolutely you know, not. Absolutely just, not. You know, no. And my, my thing is rivers. Well. Yours thing is lakes. Yeah. Everybody's thing is different. Um, real quick, man. I mean, we're coming up on two hours. That was fucking awesome, dude. I think it was a great podcast. We covered a lot. We got to know you. We got to talk swim base. Um, one thing I want to end every podcast with is like, what piece of advice would you give to somebody who is just trying to, cause you know, they always say that you start out catching one fish and then it's quantity and then quality. Mm -hmm. What would you say was your biggest thing that turned in that, that helped you go from the quantity to quality? What, what, what was that? Cause that's every angler's trajectory. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts with catching bluegill at the dock yeah. and then they yeah. go to, I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I would go fishing and mm -hmm. literally just wanted to catch 20. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck yeah. if they were two pounds, yeah. if they were 12 pounds, I would yeah. just be like, dude, we caught 32 fish today. We had a great day. And then something tricks, something, yeah. you know, something ticks and you're like, fuck the 32. Let me catch one 32 pounder. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say is that one piece of advice that'll help you go from getting off the quantity to the quality? For me, it was probably just, <sighs> this is a good, this is a really good question. Cause it's, it, it's a lot of different. Things I want to ask a really good yeah, question. This is, a, this is a great question to me. Um, uh, but I'm gonna have to say that the number one was, okay, here, here, I got it, I got it, it just came to me. This so, is also $10 on Patreon, nice cut little, it. This, no, is nice, <laughs> this is a nice little story. Okay. So whenever I first started swim baiting, all, what I did is I went on YouTube and I watched Tactical Bass. Now, nothing against those guys, I'm about to shit on a little bit, but nothing against I shit on them, Googans, all of them. Great, great <laughs> fishermen, right? They do their own thing their own way, right? But I would take what they said as factual information, right? And I would process this and I would go, okay, they're going to throw this leader line. They're going to do this, this, this. You I'm going to go out there and do everything exact, like that. Exactly the same, right? And I would wonder why the fuck is this not working here, right? <laughs> the moment it clicked, the moment it clicked is when I said, fuck all that. I'm going to do it the way I'm, I'll make it up. I'll do it myself, <clears> right? Then shit started happening when I was like, okay, I'm not going to throw a huge line. I'm not going to throw these massive hooks. Oh, I'm going to change this and do that. And then, and then it starts to come together. Do your own work. Gotcha. Do your own research. Do not take anything as factual information. Take, take I feel like we said this. Yeah, yeah we, we said did. But, but take inspiration from other anglers, but do not take it as a fact. Because there are no facts in fishing. <laughs> the only the ones you make in your head. You know <laughs> you what I mean? Can't. There are no facts in fishing. This is it. <laughs> like, you have to. Bro, man, he's going. <laughs> <laughs> man, he's going to have a hard reset right now, bro. <laughs> you ever heard the Windows computer restart? <laughs> <laughs> there are no facts in people. There are no facts in fishing. Fuck, man. Love you, big dog. Dude, so yeah. that's awesome, bro. And I think, I think I've said that time and time and time and time and time again. Time on the water, nothing beats that. Every angler's confidence lure is completely, it's so fucking funny mm -hmm. to see that like somebody will die on a hill, but they catch fish and yep. you try to do what they do. Yep. It's not no, you happening. Have to, you have it's to not. If I path. threw a fucking frog all day, I'd hate Travis because fuck throwing a frog all day. Yep. Travis throw a frog yep. all day. He'll yep. throw Fuck, I don't give a fuck. Yep. 32 degrees, two degrees, 102 degrees, yep. middle of the day, not raining, raining, snowing, he'll throw frog. And it's like every angler has their own confidence bait, has their own confidence lure. And you have if to you can that out. build your own swag, your own, what do the kids say, riz, your own whatever on the water. That's all that matters. Yep. That's the winning formula. Great gift. A great, great answer, dude. I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed the interview, man. Well, I hope you enjoyed cool. us. I want to say, I want to say real quick that, uh, I've been on a, few, a handful of podcasts now. I think that this was my best performance. No, bro. Right? It was amazing. This was, this was, I felt good about my answers here. <laughs> I'm, 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 on cast and crank. I can't I was, wait till we fucking crank, have I was a little fucking nervous, a board. This is, this is it. Like, I, you know, I feel, I feel confident. Appreciate with everything that, that's yeah, fucking dude, nice, great, dude. That's great. fucking dope, dude. That's awesome. I really, I think that us really, really honing in what we want to do with this podcast. Uh, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. That was great questions. I, I, yeah. I that's I, fucking know. awesome. Dude, that's cool, man. I'm glad. I'm glad. I always tell my friends too, and my buddies, I've been doing it too long to not start doing good shit mm -hmm. so it's like i hope i'm better at it than mm -hmm. i was five years ago because Absolutely. fuck we've been doing it that long yeah. if i wasn't catching fish anymore i wouldn't fish yeah. you know what i mean yeah. i'd hope yeah. i'm doing things now so yeah. you got anything to add roland uh let me I, I want to ask them this question earlier um you know i, I kind of want to kill the vibe man uh but what i want to ask was uh dude you got injured not that long ago yes, like I bro i want to ask you on that how, Damn, how and like as far as like you know like 
you know, just working out, stretching, all that stuff, like rehabbing wise, like, and just tossing allures, especially the heavy lures that you toss. How's that been working out for you? So I, for anyone who doesn't know, I got hit by a car in Minnesota and while I was on a bike and I shattered my collarbone. It was was quite a little. So what was it like an excuse? I didn't see you. Like six foot two guy, long hair. That's what I'm saying. I was, (laughs) I'm not going to lie though. I was going fast. All right. I was going fast and I had the light and I was like, I'm fucking going. I'm not stopping at the center. Like, I'm not going to go real slow. Oh, it was just and, one of those. And, and like, he was taking a ride on red, and it just, oh, it just okay, happened, okay, okay, okay. right? Fuck, whatever, right? I shatter my collarbone. Kyle, thank you, you're a fucking saint for taking care of me. He fucking took me home from the hospital after my surgery, helped me piss because I couldn't hardly stand because all the fucking drugs I was on. That was the first time I was ever yeah. high, by the way. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, the mopey always yeah, I've that was, never done them, but was, my friends. That was, <laughs> I, I couldn't keep anything down. That was so nasty. That I felt, sucks. But I remember, yeah. I do remember swimming down the stairs. That's what I remember. <laughs> oh, shit. I remember swimming. I was like, whoa. What? But, but anyway, like just on the drug, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, bro, like, God, what? Was like, yeah. oh, damn. God, damn. This, is, this is un. Hey, what'd you say? Those were talking about it off camera. <laughs> this, is, this is like untouched mind. So this God. is like, it got Oh, dude, yeah. I know. It's like so fucking like, virgin to full, elements. Yeah, just gets full, hit with like yeah. one oxy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I literally swam. Shit, I'm on oxy on this damn chair. The but anyway, that's fucking so, awesome. So you were hearing so, colors and smelling, yeah, I was smelling like, sounds. But, but so continue. I was fine when I, I, you know, they put me in a cast. I have a metal plate in my shoulder. I'm basically a cyborg <laughs> now. And uh, how, how was the struggle to get back to throwing a bait? Yeah. Yeah, so, this I was trying to figure out. So I was fishing, fishing in like a, less than a month, right? That's I was, dope. I was one handing. A lure, so right, right? now, so Travis, I was, I was here and I was one handing, and then probably like a month and a half in, right? They told me six months I'd be able to lift a gallon of milk out of the fridge, and a month and a half, two months in, I was throwing the mother. But it Let's was go. this was like I remember the day I went out and I caught the eight pounder in the flea shed. Um, that was like my first day on the water again. And I remember paddling and throwing and being like, fuck, I, I have a limited cast with this for sure. Like I was making really precise ones. Cause I was like, and I, got, you're young. I, was like I got 20, you're young. but I, at the <laughs> end of the you day, bounce back. at the end of the day, I was like, Oh fuck, I, I gotta go. But I was like, oh, I'll make one more in here. And then fucking eight pounder. Of course, so you can see in the video, I reached down to grab it and I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's hand. funny, dude. Yeah, that like, dude, like, but dude, these stories are just, I'm, they're, I'm, so, I'm they're, so, they're so creepily <laughs> fucking line up. Like our friend Travis had, uh, shoulder reconstructive surgery mm-hmm. for the longest oh, time, bro. He literally has had no ligaments in his arm. Like Holy he, shit. you'd ask him to do this, right? Yeah, like fucking the yeah. hardest thing ever. So he's on the road to recovery and we've been fishing a couple times and it's like, he's had to take breaks. And yeah. it's just like, again, yeah. he's 31, 30 yeah. like us. He's, you know, you're, you're youthful, 21, mm-hmm. bounce back, be all right. Yeah. But um, that's, that's crazy, man. Like I, he, I'm, we're going through the journey of him. Like he can fish for about two yeah. hours and yeah. it's like, I'm gonna chill. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, my shit hurts. This. I this definitely, shit hurts. I definitely wasn't fishing fishing hard but now i am 100 percent now for fuck sure yeah he's 100 percent and ready to fuck you up four months i was 100 percent that's, <laughs> that's where I, that's where i was 100 percent. my, my other question six, is but it, it, i'm sorry for interrupting my other question was just like what uh you you travel all over the fucking united states man what bodies of water have you not touched because i feel like uh, it's uh, being on this whole journey with you man i feel like you you've gone through so many bodies of water mm-hmm. you know uh there are specific areas that are on your list that you kind of want to touch um i i haven't fished oh ivy actually um i haven't fished cool, cool. There's maybe, maybe we can link wanna, up with wanna, uh we can link up with you and go with you because yeah, we we've been fishing a minute there um we'll talk about it off camera because yeah. uh, i again <laughs> they, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. ivy i want to hit clear lake um that's out in california, california yeah cool. that's a big one cool. um i've really hit a lot of like my little destination spots yeah <laughs> um i got to fish dixon and that was like i think you'll true. appreciate hitting um, ivy if you hit it with guys like you think. i want to fish diamond valley too a lot of lakes in california i want to fish nice um, but i'm trying to think of texas lakes that i've been to too but that's really about it i fished a lot of texas lakes we're just learning manny and i and travis and roland as well but we're just learning i'm just stepping i'm more dipping our feet into yeah. lake fishing mm-hmm. i've been a river guy thick and thin i fucking love it i we should go spend a day on town lake dude we should do is take well manny lives totally up there good. so he's he's actually about to get into a house we so should we'll, all, we should all take if y'all get paddle boards too we should go out there and have a hangout we'll do i'll cook i'll cook tacos Fuck yeah. right yeah. down the water no, we'll, we'll, we'll get, have we'll like link the full, up. have the full experience That'd we'll link fun. up it'll be easy to get along it will it we'll, we'll link up I, i'm yeah. definitely gonna 
I'm bringing my yeah. kayak, but I definitely want to learn a paddleboard. Yeah, I want to try it. I want to yeah. see it. I, I I don't think you're gonna break me of being in a kayak, but <laughs> I do want to try it. It's Maybe. just because my thing is on the river. Mm-hmm. I, my big thing was for the longest time is the overnighters and there's so much more we could talk about man but we're running out of time but the thing is I I love that we could you could pack in and out a week's worth of shit yeah. in a kayak yeah. and keep it dry I have to keep on. I have to keep I basically have a backpacking setup. Mm. Whatever a backpacker would bring is what I bring, which I like though. I like the <laughs> fact that I can get really dialed. Everything fits in the crate in one bag and that's it. You know, like I, I, I like to get that backpack setup dialed. I think that's we, I think that. we just have that a little way. bit more luxuries that we yeah. need it being, yeah. being. That's my thing is you did 40 miles down the river. Mm. And I mean, mm. I saw that whole setup you had, man. And then just the way you slept, it was so simplistic, minimalistic, yep. you yep. know, and you literally just under a tarp and an air mattress. And you never felt more alive. Yeah, we didn't even it, talk yeah. about the dopamine whatever the fuck but that same thing dude we'll do a part two we'll do yeah, a part we'll do, we have, we'll have to do a part two, two. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be more than willing yeah. to do it because we vibe I'll buy that have more stories too we can talk about stories next time yeah. uh, we'll talk about cool. stories we'll get more bumps with socials hopefully you don't lose your phone again <laughs> I know. Do you have it's the video not if no, I don't. Oh man, I was like, it's it behind, it behind me. So it, it's, like, it's yeah, it's but, not if um, you're gonna lose your phone, it's when. Just get I, used I, to that. Can I plug sponsors? Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah go plug them out. Man. Plug them out. Lateral Vision. If cool. you guys use my code, it's Homeless LV Crew 2023. It's cool. in my bio, whatever. Um, that gets you 20% off. Supports the channel greatly. That makes some dope clothes. This is actually the collab shirt. Let's see, can I turn around? Nice. I want Wait. that shirt. This <laughs> nice, the, nice. This is the collab shirt. Damn, the, let's go. Clean. There's a there's a black and a white one. If you go pick one of those up, that helps me a lot. Oh yeah. Um, Yerbe. If you like caffeinated energy drinks, Yerba Mate is super clean. Use the code HOMELESS15, all caps, HOMELESS15. Get 15% off. Hell yeah. And uh, throwback, Leviathan and G-Crack. Thank sweet, you guys so sweet. Much. You guys and are then awesome. we'll, we'll close it oh, out yes. with making sure y'all remember Outdoor Alphas is offering 15% off any Costa glasses. They've got a full stock here. Uh, all fishing gear, all the fishing gear inside is 15% off as well. Um, you can tell, tell them Albert told you at Ice Nag TV or Unpacking Yakin. Doesn't matter. Come in and buy the stuff so we don't have to see them run over car parts anymore. Uh, real quick, uh, plug in your Venmo too. Uh, I don't have it up anymore. Oh, so you have, so you if, you'd like to, if you'd like to donate, Go join the Patreon. <laughs> okay, boom. Yeah. That would be the that would boom, be the and he'll give you tips yeah. like I don't want to. I don't want to take money finding from parallelograms in water and <laughs> shit. Come on, the gold, the golden ratio. <laughs> exactly. Shit, so. Well, that's what's up, man. Well, it was nice to meet you. Thank we you had a blast. So Let's go. That was awesome. Hell See yeah. you next one. Now.